By your definition, literally every single cemetery is a mass grave. Oh, did you go to the mass grave yesterday and visit grandpa? Like, yeah. What a... M Let's let him finish. We've denied <laughs> mass graves exist, even though the definition of mass is big. So at this point... Shh, Connor, shut the f*** up. Lord, please, for the love of God. Tale of Twin Rabbits, I'm pretty sure your brain is running on 1995, okay? Never mind. Connor, f***ing, you're clear for takeoff. <laughs> We're fucking 30 minutes into this goddamn debate talking about, like, I don't know, terms about fucking murder and descriptive reality and history and all that kind of shit. And you want to talk to Lauren about fucking GPR and whether or not she can offhand fucking come up with a new way to conduct anthropology? I don't give a shit. Fucking catch up. Because basically what you're doing right now is you're acting smarter than everybody else in the fucking room while saying absolutely fucking nothing. Absolutely fucking true. Okay. Hey. What's up? Have fun, okay? Was it a fun later? Minute? Was it fun? It was a, um, it was a conversation that occurred on my channel at one point. Did you? You were just moderating this, right? Yeah, I moderated it. Did it get nasty, or was it pretty cordial? Um, a few times. It was mostly cordial. Um, I I made sure there wasn't a lot of interruptions, but at the end, the end is what everybody's talking about, of course. Okay, yeah. Lauren told me that Lance went off at the end in his final closing, final, final statement, so I look forward to getting yeah. there. Good luck. I just left. I left when that started happening. I was like, I'm getting the f*** out of here. Good luck with this, okay? <laughs> okay, See you later. Totally not related to this. This is something that I've thought about before, but I feel like I could, I'm like 50-50. I could go either way. Um... When I put myself out here and I have to have conversations, um, and I'm not like Batman, but there is a risk to what I do, right? People know who I am. Theoretically, they could find me, whatever dumb shit we've dealt with in the past. Um, I do get annoyed sometimes. Um, it's, I feel this way with that Mio guy, that ne the Nazi dude from the Politically Provoked show. I feel that way with him too. I don't like it when my face and my name are out there and I'm debating somebody that won't even like turn their camera on. That really bothers me um but maybe that's like an irrational point of view maybe there are reasons why some people should some people shouldn't like i don't know it just it, it feels uneven it feels like i'm arguing against an anonymous twitter shit poster that has no accountability ultimately for what they'll say but yeah okay wonderful now we're going to go into prepared statements now let me clarify for the audience uh what we're going to be talking about today so there's no confusion uh the topics that uh, were given to me uh, was that the debate will be primarily about retributive and vigilante justice for historical wrongs, and there might be some uh, some secondary discussions, if time permits it, about the recent burning of Catholic churches in Canada, uh, the recent discovery of the uh, unmarked indigenous graves in the same nation, and the actions of the Canadian government in the past, if it could fall under the historical definition of genocide. Uh, do we all agree on the uh, discussed topics that I, there's no confusion? Yep. Wonderful. Sounds okay, good. we will we will start with counterpoints with a prepared two minute statement. You will be timed, uh, and I will give you a warning once you have about twenty seconds left. Okay, I understand that maybe this is my fucking ADHD or whatever. I wish these statements were like fuck twenty seconds. Yo, I think retributive justice is wrong. There is no justification for it. If we follow through, then society descends into chaos with everybody getting revenge for things they think they ought to get revenge for. Boom, what are your counter? And then boom. I this like two minutes is like <clears throat> in 1872, Canada signed the first treaties on retributive justice. It's like, I dude, fuck. That this is just me. Sorry. Yeah, so in preparation for this debate, <clears throat> I think the primary thing that I landed on was the fact that uh, burning churches is just unacceptable. I understand that there's a contentious history in Canada, but there's no real excuse for throwing a Molotov cocktail inside of a building. You can have descriptive reasons, much like riots. You can understand why something is going on, but you probably can't morally justify it. So that's the number one contention that I would have. Boom. Number two, oh. when it comes to indigenous history, I think that uh, the audience will probably be surprised, or, or hopefully they're not surprised, that there is a lot of concession for the the sins of the past and, and all that kind of stuff, and we can get into that. I'm interested to talk about definitions because obviously the word genocide is being brought into this conversation, so I want to talk about that as an aspect of this. And then ultimately, I think this conversation is indicative of where we are at as a continent as a whole. Um, Europeans conquered this continent, colonized this con continent, and did some nefarious stuff in order to do that. Um, we have done sins in the past. 
now we have to reckon with those sins and move forward as a society. So I'm hoping that we can kind of, uh, even if it's very uncomfortable, even if it's contentious, I'm hoping that maybe we can we can do that here a little bit. And I'll leave Shit. it there and we can go. Wonderful. With 48 seconds to spare. Now we're going nice. to throw it over to Lord Southern. Powerful. Hey, okay, so uh -oh. Uh -oh. I've written a little something, haven't written anything else for the debate, but today we have framed this debate as a discussion, obviously, around retributive and vigilante justice and whether or not Canada is guilty of genocide. But what we are debating in reality here is acts of political terrorism, the committing of hate crimes, the burning down of religious sites, including the recent burning down of refugee churches, and those who are hell-bent on making excuses for this behavior all based on the recent discovery of mass graves of indigenous children, which activists have portrayed as evidence of genocidal actions by the Canadian government, which were covered up. The only problem with this entire debate is firstly, even if this happened and the Canadian government committed genocide, there would be no excuse to commit hate crimes today, especially against people who had no connection to said actions. And an equally important and shocking revelation should be is that no mass graves were found in the first place. This is an entirely false narrative. No, narrative. no one here today is going to deny historical injustices happened. No one is going to deny there were deliberately children taken from their homes and educated to no longer have their culture and language, and that is horrific. I don't think that should happen to anybody. However, distorting the past exaggerating atrocities, inventing the existence of mass graves to make it appear as though Canada committed and covered up some sort of Holocaust is a horrific mishandling of the truth, and it does nothing to help us uncover and heal from genuine wrongdoings which occurred. And in fact, it has caused more trauma today for Canadians and Indigenous communities who are now seeing their communities destroyed, their churches burnt to the ground, and relations ripped apart even further i'll give like rhetorical advice and then like factual advice so i've talked with her quite a bit i think that when she says there have been no mass graves found you need to qualify what you mean by mass graves because there have obviously been mass graves found but i think that what you're probably talking about are like mass like hidden graves or mass intentionally created graves of like genocide children i don't think you can just open with there were no mass graves found because clearly there have probably been large grave sites found you need to define that mass graves in here because her position or unless that's where or I guess we'll find out if that's what she's going to argue. It seems to be way more radical than what I would imagine it would be. But whew, we'll see. Hey, everybody. So I'm going to say right out of the gates that neither me or my partner uh, support or condone the burning of any religious institutions. Uh, what we're here today to talk about is obviously restorative and res uh, retributive justice in relation to the residential school system in Canada and the involvement of the Catholic Church therein. I'm going to try and say this as quickly and concisely as I can. Um, the original uh, founding father of this country, Sir John A. Macdonald, was a white nationalist. And I don't mean that in the sense that lefties like to call every single person they don't like a Nazi. Uh, he was a person who believed in the superiority of the Aryan race. He said it frequently. He, in Parliament, would say things that were considered Considered to be uh, outlandish and racist by the sign of the times. Hold on, I'm actually super curious. Um, I, I truly don't know this. When was the term Aryan? When was that invented? And when was Canada founded? Were they really using that phrase back then, Aryan? Is it, it might be. I don't, I don't know how dated that, that phrase is. I'm curious about that. In Europe, the notion of white race theory emerged in the 1850s, propagated most. Okay, okay, it's possible. All right. I wasn't sure if Aryan was like that concept emerged in around like in the 1900s or if it was prior to that. And he started both the Indian Act in Canada and the reservation school system in Canada. Uh, he also instigated the reserve system. One thing that I will say that I don't like argumentatively, I guess rhetorically it works, um, but I think you have to be very, very, very careful when you try to say the person who founded this therefore taints all of this because if you start getting into stuff like that like you can tear down so many things that are probably good very quickly the obvious and most common example of this is when um um oh god what it's not margaret thatcher what's the name of the woman that um what's the name of the woman that conservatives always attack over abortion oh it might be margaret sanger um, where, because I, I, I think, I hate to repeat, I don't know, this might not be true or whatever. Conservatives will point to her and go like, oh, this woman supported abortion. She was super racist. Therefore, if you support abortion, you're actually like, you're racist and you're like genociding black babies. I don't like that the founder did something. Therefore, everything past that is tainted. Personally, like, I don't think 
that that should be relevant at all. Like, I really don't give a fuck if somebody founded something that was or wasn't racist. I'm more curious if the way that that thing works in writing, is it racist? And in effect, is it racist? Because there are racist people that can make stuff that, you know, like outwardly doesn't really have any bad racist shit. And there are non-racist people that can create systems that actually can have like some kind of down the road, like racist impact. So I personally, from like a, from a logic bro point of view, um, I, I just don't like that argument style, but in Canada. Now, for anyone who's unaware, uh, the Indian Reservation School System, what it essentially did was took 150,000 children away from their parents' arms and forcibly put them in institutions where they were systematically beaten, tortured, raped. Uh, they had their culture removed from them, their language. Every aspect of them was destroyed. Those who tried to escape would often die in the cold or drown in the water. So it was a horrifying experience by all accounts. Now, the Catholic Church themselves have never formally apologized for this, neither have they been held to account for the thousands upon thousands of priests and nuns who, again, tortured and raped children. So I believe if we're going to be talking about uh, restorative justice, uh, the first place to begin would be that they have to both uh, be held accountable for the crimes that they've committed, as well as the fact that they have to, in some form or another, uh, pay retribution to those in which they've harmed. Thanks. Now I'm going to throw it over to Tale of Two Rabbits. I would uh, first like to thank Lance for asking me to join him today and Dylan's Luscious Locks for moderating. Um, I open, as I so often do, with a story. In 1601, Juan de Onate visited a gigantic agricultural and industrial center of more than 20,000 people in what is now central Kansas. Because he was a conquistador, he then kidnapped and tortured four children to identify the houses of the town's leaders, and immediately afterward, he waged a war to destroy the city with an army of nearly a thousand soldiers. It was a mass slaughter. For the next 500 years, the school-taught history of the United States was that tribes of the plains were barely organized, semi-nomadic hunter-gatherers who knew only territorial wars and primitivism. And then... In 2016, using records, archaeological fieldwork, and remote sensing technology, Etsanoa once again became a fact. The stories natives had been telling for generations were finally again acknowledged as fact. As has happened many times in recent years, the U.S. was forced to again confront the cruelty and lies that had been perpetrated against the indigenous peoples right up to this very day. In May of 2021, using records, archaeological fieldwork, and remote sensing technology, the stories of the residential schools recorded by the Truth and Reconciliation Commission's report and told by natives for generations were finally again acknowledged as fact. Canada is presented with two possibilities when such simple and straightforward modifications to the histories that we were all taught as children are uncovered. We can, as in the case of Etsanoa, accept the correction, accept the native stories were true all along, and move forward with the knowledge that wrongs were committed that must be reckoned with. Or we can choose, as Lauren apparently has, what has brought us here today refuse the most basic and straightforward facts in favor of denial, deflection, and dismissal. I come here as witness to those facts, as one small voice in a chorus to those stories. I it is, so something to keep in mind, so there's a whole meta subtext, subtext, uh, per, super text? There, there's a whole meta layer over this, in that, so Lauren Southern is essentially like the, the queen Nazi, right? So this is probably going to inform every member here in terms of how they approach this debate. But if we do just go by like just the word stated, Lauren did concede that there were wrongs committed that need to be looked at, but the pushback I think had to do with the mass graves, and I don't remember if she wrote of the genocide or not. Um, although to the audience, it's probably not gonna sound like that. Um, I would imagine that anytime Lauren like tries to retreat from any uh, accusation of wrongdoing, it's gonna sound like she's running from all of it because of the kind of like the meta layer over this conversation. I come here to discuss justice for those wrongs and the restoration. This guy talking right now is trying way too hard to sound like uh, the CGP Grey guy. Holy shit. Dignity for those who suffer what up. was erased. Okay. So I just want to reestablish the rules one last time. If it gets out of control, I will assert myself and shut down the conversation. If you believe it is unfair, I'm sorry to say that I don't care. I will do my best to, to restore. I'm a law and order moderator. Law and order. Uh, other than that, I think everybody else knows no terms of service violations of any sort. Uh, we are now going to have an open format. It is now open for dialogue. Well, considering that I have just been accused of denying basic facts, I would really like uh, 
tale of twin rabbit to describe which basic facts I've denied. Okay, strong. In so opening... we have a pointed question. What facts have been denied? All right, in the opening statement. Statement, you said that these deaths didn't occur and that these bodies weren't found. That's not what I said, is it? I said there were no mass graves found. Got it. What is mass graves, I though? I would be curious to know what your evidence is for that claim. Firstly, I would like to ask both you and Lance to describe which mass graves have been found in Canada, and then I can respond to that. Would you so the factual basis behind this, so and this is kind of where I'm where, when, in my research. So I don't know how Lauren is using mass graves, but the problem is, and I've looked for this, it feels like the overall claim is that children were killed or genocided, and then they tried to bury them in residential schools and hide the bodies. That seems to be the, the overarching claim. I can't find a single example of that. And that feels like what kicked off everything um, relating to like this whole recent like reconciliation council, the whole genociding and thing. Like, th I, I haven't found a single shred of evidence for that. I, the only thing I could find when I looked it up was there was a National Post story, which is right leaning in Canada. Uh, but there was a National Post story, and they claimed that the chief had said, they have him quoted saying, well, actually, um, we knew about that grave site. We just kind of like, it wasn't upkept and we like lost track of it but like it, it, i mean it's not like an it was just not maintained right which is a far cry from the original claim but do you look like to be more specific as in the one that well, was I, I you're saying i'm lying by saying no mass graves have been found so tell me where have the mass graves been found well the story that kicked it off was the campalus oh, residential no. school mass graves mm -hmm. that were identified using ground penetrating radar between may 21st and 24th 7,000 square meters of land just under two acres was covered in the location of the apple orchard at the Schwetmick Museum and Heritage Park. This area of interest was chosen for the survey based on a number of factors. First, the knowledge keepers are all histories that recall children as young as six years old being woken in the night to dig holes for burials in the apple orchard. Second, a juvenile rib bone that surfaced in the same area. Third, a juvenile tooth that was excavated from a shovel test pit during an impact assessment conducted by Simon Fraser University's archaeology department. A juvenile tooth is not an indicator of loss of life, but given both discoveries, the possibility should not be discounted. As a preliminary assessment, this project sought to first ascertain the likelihood of human burials within the study area, Second, begin a preliminary assessment of the possible locations of specific burials. And finally, develop steps to further this work in order to confirm the number and location of possible burials. Right, and ground penetrating radar cannot detect bodies. This, I don't think this is the best Are argument to go for. Are you saying that as an assertion? Absolutely, you can go look this up. In fact, the woman who conducted the GPR herself actually went to my university. Uh, she said herself, we cannot confirm anything. This is simply an assumption based on, and I would encourage people watching to go and take a look at what images ground penetrating radar show. They just show anomalies in the ground. They don't give you any context. They don't tell you if bodies are there. The anomalies could appear to be graves. Do they know if this grave site is just an overgrown graveyard? Do they know if it was the community graveyard? Do they know if there are any bodies in what these ground anomalies look like? No. And this is the facts of the case, the woman who did the ground penetration test in Kamloops, which sparked this all off, stated, we cannot know if there are any bodies under here until someone has dug this up and they've exhumed the bodies. In GPR terminology, a subsurface anomaly refers to any irregularity noted below the surface, while a target of interest suggests that the anomaly has an increased index of suspicion for being the object of the search. As a preliminary assessment, the GPR was conducted in prospection mode. This means ranging across the study zone, following the guidance of the community members, capturing anomalies as screenshots in the digital video logger, and flagging anomaly locations on the ground for further investigation. A preliminary investigation such, such as this is not intended to provide exact numbers or final results, but rather to confirm the existence of burials. These results are as conclusive as GPR allows, but only forensic investigation with excavation will provide definitive results. 
if they are there. And not My understanding is that they were supposed to do this exhuming process, but now they've said that it might take years. I don't know why that's the case, because maybe there's a good reason, but that seems kind of weird to me. Like, if it's a grave that was dug by humans, it's not like these guys are digging, you know, like miles into the dirt. But maybe there's a reason why, but I don't think any bodies have been exhumed from any of these yet. Not only that, but the tribe leader there in Canada of the Kamloops band that brought out the initial statement about this said, even if there are bodies under the ground here, it's not a mass grave. And these are just preliminary findings, which has been the general consensus of all of these grave sites found, that they are not mass graves and portraying it as such is deliberately misstating the truth and trying to make it seem as though Canada were committing some Holocaust where they were lining children up, shooting them and throwing them in a grave that they dug. When we are talking about graveyards, if there are any bodies at all. Okay, you just said that the woman who did the GPR examination went to college with you. The director of the company that actually did it is a man named Julio. So who did you go to school with? No, no, she's an instructor at the university I went to. And I mean, I can read so her name here. Let me, so this company. is the girl who did the GPR technology test, which once again, GPR cannot uh, pick up organic matter. Her name was Sarah Beliu. I'm, I'm not sure if I'm pronouncing that right. I'm terrible with French names. Uh, so she so conducted the, the search herself company. and she stated nothing she has found can be confirmed unless excavations are done at the scene. These excavations have not happened. Uh, I didn't so get you, your tell to rabbits. So enough. this is from the Globe and oh, Mail. Give me, give hold, me a moment. hold on. Give me a moment. You were, I was you trying to hear. Me? Give me. Uh oh. Okay, let me just start. When I'm talking, nobody else is supposed to talk. I was. I didn't hear what tell to rabbits was saying earlier. Uh, could you repeat what you're trying to say? Well, at this point, I'm a little bit lost. She's friends with someone whose name she doesn't know how to pronounce, who isn't the director of the company who was hired to do the scanning. So at this point, I don't understand exactly what it is we're discussing. I thought we were here to discuss burning of churches and restorative justice. If you'd like to- Oh my God. Oh, there are so many better counter arguments to this. Um, Ground penetrating scans do not 100% detect organic matter. That is absolutely true, but we can probably reasonably infer based on where things are. The common features of a formal burial in a cemetery setting typically include a convex reflective pattern at the upper surface of a grave shaft, vertical refractive patterns at the sides of the grave shaft, a horizontal reflective pattern at the base of the grave, and also a range of possible reflective patterns for the contents of the grave. These features are not exclusive to burials. However, in areas where burials are expected, they can act as preliminary confirmation of the likelihood that burials exist and of their specific locations. I will reiterate that there was additional supporting evidence. The depressions in the orchard that correlate with the subsurface anomalies observed in the GPR data there was an east-west configuration of the subsurface anomalies in the orchard that support typical Christian burial traditions. The juvenile rib bone and tooth discovered in the same survey location. And finally, but most importantly, the ceremonial knowledge keepers oral histories that recall burials in this location. That there probably be like bodies there. In my experience though, approaching a decade of work using GPR within a burial context, there are very likely to be many human burials in the study area. Further remote sensing such as GPR should be conducted to locate all possible burials. After all, this investigation has barely scratched the surface, covering just under two acres of the total 160 acre residential school site. And maybe before we draw concrete conclusions about it, maybe it'd be best to wait for the exhuming of these bodies to begin or this to immediately like pile in on the on the ad homs, um, I think looks kind of bad. Although you have so much leeway here to shit on Lauren because her reputation is so bad that rhetorically it probably works. But it's very strange to me that this was, if any Canadians in chat, by the way, think I'm wrong or anything, feel free to correct me. But my understanding is that this was the big event. This burial site was the one that kicked off everything. So you would think that you would come to this ready to discuss this particular burial site. You must, you must, 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 must be ready to discuss this particular um, burial site. Um, 
What was the um? What, what was the name? How do you spell the name of this particular burial site as well? I just want to do a quick Google search and see if I can find this woman's name without like digging around like super super hard. Implying they did research. Well, this guy's supposed to be like some super in indigenous. Okay, Cam Loops. This is just the beginning. This guy's gonna trigger the fuck out of you. Sarah Boulier Destiny. This is her name. Ground penetrating writer expert, Dr. Sarah um, Bellu. <laughs> Beulu? I don't know how the fuck to pronounce this shit. Recollections of children as young as six being woke up in the middle of the night to dig holes for burials in the apple orchard. And human bones found in the same area among the factors of the area being chosen for a GPR survey. Led the search south of the school building, not far from the South Thompson River, finding signs of 200 probable graves. With ground penetrating render, we can never say definitively or definitely that they are human remains until you excavate, which is why we need to pull back a little bit and say they are probably burials. They are targets of interest. They have multiple signatures that present as burials, but because of that, we have to say that they are probable until one excavates. So it sounds like she is the lady that led this, and it sounds like this is more or less her statement. I would super expect that in this debate, this is, you would, at the very least, you're gonna know it's Bolehu, 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 whatever, that you would that you would know this, because this is a pretty important, <laughs> this is a pretty important thing to start with, but. Challenge GPR, and whether or not it's efficacious in the use of archaeological remains, I would point you to Etsanoa. Are you also challenging the identification of literally every site in the can, Americas that has? Can used I GPR? can I jump ahead? Wait, I would let tell to yeah, let them finish, finish what they were trying to say. Can you finish that? Because Sam? this is outside the scope of this conversation. I keep hearing affirmations of, "Oh, well, I know a person. I don't care." Ah, oh, dude. Ah, oh, this guy is. This guy is a worse debater than Lance. Okay. I think Lauren shouldn't have said anything about like, oh, she went to my school because again, she's toxic and everything that's associated with her will be toxic. But she didn't say like, oh, I got my friend to fucking look into this. And this is what she said. She's citing the person that led the search. Okay. Like she is Canadian. It's not unreasonable. I think she lives in this area. I don't know if that's toxic. I don't know if she lives near the area, but like, it's not unreasonable that she would know the person through a university. Um, this is a crazy ad hom to start with. And to say, I don't want to talk about this because so you know a person. It's not just a random fucking person. Wait, what the fuck? You know, a person I am talking about the company that did the work. I'm talking about the woman who every Canadian article has stated did the search in Kamloops. And anyone can look this up. Go look up who did the GPR test in Kamloops. I'm reading the Globe and Mail right now. Uh, the title, Anthropologist Explains How She Concluded 200 Children Were Buried at Kamloops Residential School. Okay, stop right and, there. Stop yeah. right there. How she concluded the 215 bodies yeah. were buried. And so with, once again, that's just said. media, media bullshit, because the article literally says she also stressed her findings cannot be confirmed unless excavations are done at the scene. Can I and can I jump ahead between the two of y'all? Okay, uh, one second. Lance was trying to say something before you, and so I wanted to make sure he got a chance to speak. No, to I want I wanted to, I want to tail to finish what he's saying, and then I'll go after counterpoints. Okay, then we'll have tail finish what he's saying, then we'll move over to counterpoints. <laughs> he doesn't want to finish. Oh no, now I so now his strategy is because it sounds like he doesn't actually. Which is unbelievable to me. If he's literally like, hey, I'm indigenous. I play indigenous video games all day. That's how much I love it. That you wouldn't know anything about this. Um, like, I, this was like day one of me reading about this, where I was like, hey, like, what is a GPR? What does this mean? Like, this is stuff that you figure out immediately, right? Because if you want to be involved in the conversation, you have to do like some, a little itty bitty bit of preliminary reading on like, well, what the fuck is this shit? How, how can, how, you know, the thing that irritates me the most about this is like people will cry. People cry so much about me irresponsibly platforming alt writers. But when I have a debate with these guys, dude, I do a fuck ton of homework for this shit. I got fucking outlines. I like read all the fucking bullshit. I've got like all my little fucking Google Docs and all this shit. And then these guys will come on and they don't even know like fucking ground zero, like anything about the initial story. How are you going to cry about me irresponsibly platforming somebody? Like, holy shit. Like at this point, the guy might as well ask her to like fucking queue up bot lane because Jesus Christ, what the fuck? Okay. Right. If she would like to challenge the findings of basic archaeology, then she's welcome to do so. But that's not why we're here, as I was led to believe. You made this accusation against me. I responded, and I'm citing the individual who found, made these oh, findings. Oh God! Can I can I bridge these two fucking perspectives, please? No! Mm. 
This is why I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate, I hate duo debates. I hate duo debates. The reason why I hate duo debates is because anytime you're approaching a kill shot down some argumentative ladder, your partner wants to jump in and pull it somewhere else. You don't need to pull it anywhere else. So from Lauren's perspective, she started with a claim. The other guy fired back and said, your claim is bullshit. She challenged him on it. Now he's saying, well, I don't want to talk about that. And now Connor wants to derail to something else. I don't think you should pull it in any other place. I think the, 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 argue, the back and forth here is probably good for Lauren. If anybody should be trying to move the convo, Lance should be jumping in here and Lance should be standing. Okay, we don't care about like, okay, the initial burial site, like the details aren't really what we're here to discuss. We want to talk about like stuff related to the overall state of the residential schools and what should be done in response to these residential schools uh, like existing. Lance should be the one trying to bail his friend out here. Not, not Connor, but. Because otherwise we're going to spend the whole time on fucking minutia. Okay. Okay, thank you. All right, so- It's also not minutia, too. Oh my god, he fucking totally destroyed her momentum. <laughs> oh no. So let, let's go ahead and bridge these two perspectives for the love of God. The primary contention is not, you know, GPR or whether or not kids died or anything like that. The whole reason is the use of definitions and words. Ultimately, I would like to avoid semantics. And instead of like fighting over semantics, I would like to talk about the concepts that we're trying to convey. The main objection that I think Lauren is poking to, that I would poke to as well, is basically the use of mass graves. When we use words like mass graves, basically what I conceptualize is people handed shovels, marched out into the woods, executed, and then thrown in shallow. Okay. He is derailing her argument a little bit. This is a really good assertion, though. I wish he would have done it right at the start instead of derailing this line of argumentation. What are mass graves absolutely needs to be defined. I'm still not sure because when you say mass graves, he's absolutely right. This is, and I criticized Lauren at the beginning. She should have had this in her opening statement. Your, what, what are mass graves? Is it just a place where a lot of people were buried? Because that's not what people think when they hear mass graves. When people think mass graves, and you can say what you want, you're lying if you think otherwise. But the reality is that when people say mass graves, what they think of is you lined up a whole bunch of people, put them in front of a ditch, shot them, buried them, didn't tell anybody about it. That's what most people think of when you say mass Mass graves. They don't just mean a fucking cemetery. Um, this this should have been explained at the very beginning of this debate, so they could be um, they could be clear on what terms they were using. Graves and then bod and then dirt dirt loosely thrown over them. Okay, that's the primary contention here is whether or not that's what's occurred. And based off of historical fact, which I'm sure a tale of two rabbits and the serfs can assert one way or the other whether or not they agree with this, that's not what happened. They didn't march out 200 kids into the woods, execute them one at a time, throw them in a ditch, and throw dirt over them. And there, I have more points to this, but I just want to let you, let's just bridge this gap on the definition of mass graves and keep it moving. So, uh, Lauren, you're already starting out with conspiracy theories. Whether or not you agree with the way the technology is being used, that's really not up for debate right now. Because at the end of the day, the people who have been accused right now of uh, accomplishing these crimes, um, they in no short form have already, um, like, you've received uh, a condolence from the Pope as an acknowledgement that something has happened here. There has been multiple instances, such as the Mohawk tribe, that have actually had to exhume bodies after ground penetration had been used. This is not something in which the ground penetrating uh, radars have discovered these bodies and then suddenly we don't have any idea about whether or not this is occurring. Also, the testimonies that have been given in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which are numerous, we're talking thousands and thousands of people, have attested to the treatment of the children. In so this is something that I talked about earlier. So so here's, this is just like, um, this is a, this, yeah, also, I don't understand Lance's point. So the Pope said something was wrong, but then he also said that the Catholic Church didn't recognize that this happened. I, does, he must know the Pope is part of the Catholic Church. I, I don't know. I don't know where he's going with this. I never know where the fuck Lance's brain is going with this. Um, something that's really important, and this is why I push so fucking hard against, like, um, against the, the cop videos and the BLM, like, some of the examples that they choose or whatever, um, this is just a piece of like human life advice, especially important for things like relationships. Um, and that could be romantic or sexual or friendships or whatever, any, any type or, or coworker relationships. If you open an argument with something that is not true, you could have 50 other true statements behind it, but your credibility is dashed when you, um, when, when you open with something that's not true. This is why when people talk about like Breonna Taylor, I think that what happened, everything involved with Breonna Taylor, Taylor was preventable, and some of the behavior, even assuming the worst case scenario, was absolutely unacceptable. That cop blind firing into the window, that's some shit that you read about in fucking video games. Absolutely unbelievable. But the problem is that when you open that conversation with the cops shot her when she was asleep in bed, well, 
if they if somebody figures out that you're lying about that, why the fuck would they trust you about anything else you say? You cannot open with a lie. Even if you have a piece of information and you change your mind on it later. So for instance, in the in the in the opening part of the um, pandemic, the CDC didn't recommend wearing masks, and Fauci said that there was no reason to wear masks. Probably not the best statement to make. And conservatives have hung him on like that one statement. And now we've got people like fucking Lauren sometimes saying like, oh well, I don't trust the CDC. I don't trust anything. Blah 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 blah. I was like, okay, calm the fuck on. Like because because they changed their mind or whatever on the mask thing. Now we're throwing out. Now we're gonna listen to like Alex Jones on on vaccines over anybody else and like any of the medical right. So th- you can't you cannot start off with bad information. As soon as you do that, and then somebody catches you on it. And you want to back off to like, okay, well, what about the thousands of other blah, blah, blah. Okay, thousands of other, then, then start with that. If you've got thousands of other people's worth of testimony, then start with that. Why would you start with a lie? In my brain, because I have a reptile brain just as much as the rest of you guys, when somebody starts a story off to me with a lie, I'm assuming you have nothing. Because the assumption that I make when I'm talking to somebody is that if you're going to argue a point, you're going to lead with your best foot. You're not going to start with some weak bullshit and try to surprise me at the end. You're going to, to start with your strongest argument, your best foot, because that's as humans. That's what we do, right? Why do you think that I was doing this bad thing last night? Because I fucking, I talked to fucking Jerry and he saw you there, right? You're not going to say like, well, I checked your gas tank this morning and I noticed that it was a little bit lower than it should have been based on where you said you were going. You don't start with that shit. That, no, one's, no one does that. You're going you're gonna to lead with your strongest piece of evidence every single time um okay so don't yeah don't fuck up these residential schools once again that is not a matter up for did they line them up against the walls and shoot every single one of them in the face that is not exactly what happened here once they became wards of the state as in once they became the property of the federal government or the provincial government their treatment then became their responsibility so whether they died from experimental uh starvation, which is something that happened, whether they died from high rates of tuberculosis, which is something that happened, whether they died from torture, rape, or abuse, which is something that happened. One in five children was sexually abused in these schools. That was sexual abuse that was happening while, again, they were children as wards of the state. So it doesn't matter how you want to try and skirt past whether or not these uh, these crimes had occurred. Uh, virtue signaling is a terrible argument. Yeah, Lance seems to lean on the heartstrings, which is not good. I mean, like, it can be effective. I mean, like, leaning on heartstrings. I just think you have to lay, like, a very small factual foundation before you start leaning on it to do it. But- okay, I'd like to address that. Um, sure. So, okay. I, I'm... Um, do you want to give... It was towards Lauren, but are you okay with Counter responding? Uh, yeah, he can respond. Actually, Connor, can I just quickly uh, make one clarification and then I'll jump to you? Um, I never stated atrocities didn't happen at these schools. It was a very unfortunate thing in the 1800s and 1900s, early 90s. She needs to not use the word unfortunate because when you say unfortunate, you are taking so much away from ever like finding common ground. When you say unfortunate, you make it sound like, oh shit, a ton of kids just happen to fucking die at these schools. That sucks. Like, damn dog, what are you going to do? That word is a very, very, very bad word and can betray like a deeper... I would say a misunderstanding of maybe how, I don't know if I'd say intentional, but how negligent some of these schools were. I think unfortunate is a very, very bad word to use here. 1900s, particularly in general, that there were horrific things going on at orphanages, boarding schools, residential okay, schools. This is of horrific, course, it's a better word. This. But this you is, have asserted, okay. and I don't want to see you walk back on this unless you're going to admit it, that these were mass graves. You have asserted that they are evidence of genocide when the very chiefs of these tribes who you're saying are talking about the lived experience in the area have stated these are not mass graves. Some of these, if the bodies are found, we don't know whose graves they even are. They could be a mix of settler children as well who died of tuberculosis. And there was a pandemic going on at this time that the residential schools were at their peak. these could be various reasons, but they were not mass graves. And that is what I am calling you out on. That's what I'm calling out all these activists on that have made this claim. And dying of tuberculosis, dying of disease. Well, of course, we can talk about horrific, uh, the, the horrific conditions. To say that people were intentionally trying to give children tuberculosis, I think is absurd. But I'll let Connor keep going. Yeah, so I just want to jump ahead descriptively because at the end of the day, like this is what I guess frustrates me about this conversation. So we can describe wrongs and evils uh, on a spectrum and we can just acknowledge that they're evil and that they're wrong. So, for instance, uh, Lauren and I are both parents. If our children were taken from us, uh, forcibly taught another language, uh, wards of the state. And then, and then by the way, like the, the demographics or, or the stats that I saw was literally like 
seventy uh, percent tuberculosis, like thir- like twenty percent fire, and ten percent death from exposure during attempted escape. So if my son was kidnapped from my home, forced to learn another language, given a different name, and then tried to escape back to me and died in the woods, I can't think of a more horrific thing to experience, except for my family being dragged out all at once and being executed. So on a spectrum, it's pretty much like the second worst thing that I can imagine. And I think that we can concede that while also basically trying to get into the historical detail. And by the way, like this isn't so much so. So whenever I'm trying to describe past historical wrongs or anything like that, I'm not trying to excuse it. Okay, I'm trying to be descriptive about the historical past. And then what I would say, I'll just jump out on this limb, is that by definition, by the UN's own definition, kidnapping children um, and then basically trying to destroy in whole or in part a a certain demographic group or whatever is the definition of genocide. The question is, when did this end? Whether or not this is comparable to other historical atrocities, which uh, if you on a spectrum, you can probably say. Um, And then whether or not that justifies current vandalism and current attacks on Christian churches. That's kind of like uh, the crux of it for me. Okay, one moment. Uh, I was given a link by Lance that I've put in the chat about tuberculosis, and I will also put it in the group chat as well for everybody else. Uh, Lauren responded to Lance, so I want to give Lance some time to respond. Uh, yeah, so first off, there's uh, studies that have come out now that say researchers, uh, researchers say that tuberculosis at the residential schools was no accident. So again, that was one of the many things that were done to these children, including the fact that these children were experimented on by giving them various different degrees of uh, sustenance in that they were given malnutrition. Wait, is that true that a lot of children, like not just like one or two times, but a lot of children were intentionally infected by... Okay, this is what he linked. Let's. I'm curious about this. Reachers say that TB at residential schools was no accident. Two experts in tuberculosis say the mass death from TB at schools was no accident, but the result of a deliberate neglect that was part of Canada's broader genocidal project. Lena Faust, a PhD student at McGill International TB Center in Montreal, and Courtney Heffernan, manager at the Tuberculosis Program Evaluation Research Unit at the University of Ontario, acknowledged that on July 12th, Globe and Mail op-ed that it's unnown how many of the children whose remains were recovered from Armageddon the past two months died as a result of TB. Um, but as early as 1907, Chief Medical Officer of the Department of Indian Affairs, Peter Henderson Bryce, identified schools as an ideal vector for TB transmission, going as far as to say it was almost as, as if the prime conditions for the outbreak of epidemics had been deliberately created. Faust and Heffernan, who are advocates for ending TB in Canada, emphasized that although there was a TB epidemic at the time, it was greatly exacerbated by conditions of residential schools. TB is a communicable, infectious disease directly shaped by inequity at the individual and population levels. It is well established with social determinants of health, including malnutrition, overcrowding, and Bryce found that the TB death rates are far higher in residential schools. So what I'm reading, what I'm trying to find in here is when you rise to saying that some deaths were deliberate, I'm going to need evidence of something that couldn't be explained by like a systemic impoverishment condition, right? So here is an issue that we have right now. My, these are some assumptions that I'm working on. I could be wrong. I'm pretty sure I'm right though. The indigenous schools were probably overcrowded. They were probably underfunded. And they probably weren't ran by people that were like at the top of their game. My guess is that the best of the best probably weren't working at indigenous skills. So that's my guess. So what I'm going to need to see, and I'm hoping it's in this article, what is this evidence of that it was intentionally made so that children would die of tuberculosis? Because you're going to have to do better than there were poor conditions. Bryce found that the TB death rates were far higher in residential schools than among children in the general Canadian population. In Southern Alberta alone, he found that 20% of residential school children died with TB as the most common cause of death. When I see stats like this, it makes so I'm guessing it was probably the highest in Southern Alberta. Is Southern Alberta the name of a province? I thought it was all just Alberta. Am, am, am I wrong? Is there like a Southern Alberta and a Northern Alberta? Stuff like this like sets my bullshit alarm off hardcore. Whenever I hear somebody say like, oh, like if somebody were to say to me, illegal immigrants commit so much crime in the United States. In the Southeast quadrant of New Mexico alone, 42% of incarcerated prisoners are like, wait, why the fuck are you picking like that one area? Wait, what? I, this just seems like a weird, like in Southern Alberta alone, 28% of residential school children, die. like why? I, that's just, a, it seems like a weird region to pick for, I don't know. Why not like all of Canada or why not a, like, I don't know, but whatever. Um, <clears throat> According to the Canadian Public Health Association, TB death rates in First Nations communities in the 30s and 40s were 700 per 100,000, some of the highest ever recorded in a human population, but in residential schools, they were astronomical, 8,000 per 100,000. 
Um, as a result, Bryce recommended improvements to the school buildings and children's diets, as well as having TB nurses on staff. The federal government of the day not only ignored Bryce's advice, arguing that these changes were too costly, but prevented him from doing any further research into conditions in residential schools and presenting his findings at academic conferences. In his 1922 book outlining his findings, the stories of national crime being an appeal for justice to the Indians of Canada, Bryce blasted the feds, arguing this tra trail of disease and death has gone on almost unchecked by any serious efforts on the part of the Department of Indian Affairs. And TB is still spreading in Canada with 1,796 cases reported in 2017, a disproportionate number of them infecting First Nations and Inuit communities. According to Faust and Heffernan, the amount of active TB cases was 400 times higher among Inuit peoples than the non-Indigenous populations. How many Inuit people are there? What is the Inuit population? 148,000 people, okay. The staggering imbalance underlines a continuing consequence of colonial structural violence and a failure to address the social determinants of TB, such as equitable access to health care and adequate housing. A genuine attempt at reconciliation will not only recognize the truth of the suffering deliberately inflicted on indigenous peoples by settlers, but also honoring indigenous communities more. Okay, so this doesn't this doesn't satisfy that claim at all. The idea that this was done like um, like deliberately um, it, it is absolutely. I doubt Lauren is probably familiar with this or maybe Connor. I don't know if either of them will read this article, but th yeah, this like all of everything in this article can just be explained by underfunding, neglect and a lack of care. Now you can argue that it was like grossly negligent, which is fine. There are like crimes even for that, but um, did um, Lance read past the headline? No chance. No chance does Lance read this article. 0% <laughs> Zero chance, but intentionally to see how children would react to different amounts of, say, milk and vitamins being given to them. The other thing to talk about when it comes to uh, children and the residential schools and uh, their atrocious numbers is, again, the mortality rate was about 40 to 60 percent in these Indian residential schools. Uh, if they are, like we've all established, I think we all agree right now, that they were wards of the state, it doesn't matter what the cause of death was, even though the cause of death in many cases could be things like, again, physical or sexual torture, uh, including traditional torture. There was an electrical chair in one of these schools. That being done, it doesn't matter if they died from starvation. It doesn't matter what. If you are taking electrical chair in one of these schools, I I hate these types of debate. I would lose my mind on this, but okay. Taking children from their parents, you become responsible as their guardian for what happens to them. So all the deaths are responsible uh, okay, under can the I... residential school system. And finally, my last point is going to be this. We cannot talk about this as if it's something that happened a long time ago and just a sordid part of our past. The last residential school in Canada 1996. closed in 1996. This is a talking point that's brought up a lot, but I'm pretty sure the vast majority of these schools were closed like in the early 1900s. Like, um, does anybody have a timeline for these? I tried to look at it, but it was like, there was one that went into like 96 or whatever, but it's not like they closed like the last huge batch of them in 1996. I've heard this talking point so many times. Okay, if you want some context, last time Canada won the Stanley Cup was 1993. Fucking Nirvana was still playing, you know, like that's that's not generations ago. Okay, I, okay. I need to interject with one stat. There, there's one stat that I just need to clarify. Yeah, of course. Okay, okay so Lance, you're, you're saying that the mortality rate was 40 to 60%. You're talking about like individual schools, right? Not like the whole, the entirety of the program, right? So according to the Dr. Bryce report, which was the medical inspector for the Department of Indian Affairs, he said the over sum total death was around 40 to 60 percent mortality rate for children in Indian reservation schools. OK, th then I want to address this head on, because basically the current historical estimate total for, for deaths is around 4000. As we've as we've already talked about previously in the debate, total participants are around 150,000. That puts the death rate at roughly two and a half percent. So if you're talking about the roughly 40 to 60 percent, what I read was that there were some schools where there were fires. So as a result, like 70% or 60% of the student body died in that fire. I also read that there were tuber tuber tuberculosis outbreaks. So within that subset of a specific school, like let's say there were 30 kids, 60% of them died in a horrific way. And I again, like whenever I'm being descriptive, I'm not trying to minimize this, okay? I wonder what was overall mortality in um, residential schools, Canada? I wonder if we can find that number. I wonder what the actual answer is. I haven't looked at this. Quick facts on residential schools. There was a 40 to 60% mortality rate in Indian residential schools. Does that mean in all of them? So we have a Dr. Bryce report in 1907. So this, so this doesn't include anything past the 1900s? Isn't that kind of... Can we get this Dr. Bryce report? Sorry, give me a second. I'm just, I'm curious about this. Dr. Peter Bryce, Indian schools deal out death. Sterling rate of mortality is shown in report to the department. 
25%. Dr. Rice shows that conditions are such to encourage disease. Report says that of the total 1,537 pupils reported upon, nearly 35% are dead. And in one school with absolute accuracy, the statement shows that 69% of the X pupils are dead. And everywhere, it was almost invariable cause of death was given as tuberculosis. So this report was published in 1907. I wonder, I don't know if either Connor or Lauren will know this, but if that report was published in 1907, then it's a little bit silly to say that like 40% of all the kids died because it's like, well, at that point they had, but if you're making the argument that these schools were running until like the 70s, or I'm sorry, until 1996, then, then I mean, you're making it sound like 40% of children were dying literally up to 96. That's, that's I feel like, I don't know if this is like, we'll see. I'm not trying to minimize this, but I'm just trying to clarify that 150,000 students weren't taken into a boarding school and then 40 to 60% of them died. That's just not factually accurate. I also have one thing I want to respond to Lance here because this is really important. Sure, and would it be it, possible to allow Lance to respond to that first and then- Yeah, absolutely. Sure, so from, all right. Yeah, yeah. So, from the, so from the same study counterpoints, it turns out that 90% of them suffered severe physical, emotional, or sexual abuse at the hands of the people who were guarding them. As a result of that, many of them also committed suicide. So it isn't simply a, a matter of them uh, dying in fires, a matter of- Does he not know the year of the report? them dying by tuberculosis, a matter of them dying by starvation, which of course were all accountable reasons. Did he say the 1907 report by Dr. Bryce, do you think? If 90% of the children are suffering one of those conditions, I think you'd all agree that on some, like the sum total of this, this was an atrocity being committed. I don't think he actually knows the year of the report. He said same report, but does he know it was in 1907 or does he think this was something like very, very recent? Sure, and okay. just because I was directed Wait. at me. Yep. Yeah, but Lauren so was fast. next. If, so you, if you've okay. got a quick okay. point, yeah, go and then I'll yeah. go. Okay. So, so fast. Again, hold on, I'm sorry. Lance cites the Reconciliation Council, which is 2016, just by current events, to only list around 4K deaths out of 150,000 participants. Sure, the TRC says it, but he specifically referenced this report by Dr. Bryce, um, which was in 1907, which I I'm guessing, because I don't really know, but I'm guessing there were probably way more motherfuckers dying of tuberculosis in those years than there probably were in the 60s, 70s, 80s, and 90s, right? Like, he's making it sound like of all 150,000 students, like 90% of them were either like killed or raped. Like, that's what he's making it sound like. Like, right ever i'm being descriptive i'm not trying to minimize what the fuck happened it was fucking awful i am just trying to be descriptive so we are accurate because if i heard that 150,000 of my countrymen were or, or ethnicity or whatever were put through a system and 60 percent of them died then maybe i would be molotov cocktailing some shit right that's why we need to be very specific about what happened historically okay, connor's got on focusing on the numbers yep Okay. Also, uh, Lance, people are asking for the source and what you've provided. Could you send that over to me? Yeah, yeah of I course. I throw it over to Lauren. Cool. Yeah. So this is something that really rubs me the wrong way. Whenever people talk about residential school programs and compare the residential schools that were opened in the 1800s to the ones that existed in the 90s and were closed down then. If we talk about, for example, uh, Lance talked about an electric chair existing and then said the last residential school that existed was shut down in 97. Oh, so now she's talking about the, the, the linking the years. This is, I think, a really important part of their argument because that is what Lance is trying to make it sound like. The last school was closed in 96. They had goddamn electric chairs in these schools. So it's good to focus on the timeline here. That school was called Kavalik Hall and 96. it was closed in... 96. It was closed in the Northwest Territories. It was not set up as a residential school. In fact, it was a whole legal battle with the Canadian government to even get it registered as a residential school because what it actually was, was it was a hostel slash boarding room that was set up for kids who did not have families that were near high schools because they were too rural. So the Northwest Territories government said, okay, we need to create boarding in the town. And then if kids are way far out in the middle of nowhere, we can give them the option to go to high school so they have somewhere to stay. An indigenous kid came out, stayed in this boarding area, and then later took the government to court to get reparations for residential schools claiming that it was a residential school because he was removed from his family home by the government for the purpose of education and that he started speaking his language uh, he started forgetting some of his language while he was going to an English speaking school. And thus that was part of the destruction of his history. And to compare this to schools, where there was abuse going on, where there was tuberculosis outbreaks and where people were being forcibly removed from their homes, 
and comparing that to schools where it's like, hey, you know, kids that are in rural areas can't have a high school education. Oh, Let's you, pay the hospital moment. for them. One moment. Like, Wait. That's absurd. Oh, man. You can read the cutting case. Her off. Give me a moment. Can you give me a moment? Uh -oh. Stream is, uh, seems to have crashed. I just want to say, <laughs> if you have a team with Lance and like a fucking professional indigenous guy, and Lance is the one dealing with most of the arguments, you're so fucked. Where's the meme where it's like, dude, this is my debate partner. I'm going to lose the debate. Like, Lance would be in every single one of those memes. Uh, yeah, I guess my first response would be that if your assertion is that nothing bad happened at that school, and then therefore it doesn't matter, um, my statement as to which uh, the last residential school closed in 1996, I think you're just resorting to pedantry. That doesn't change the fact that it was still considered a residential school. Oh my god, you ha dude, you have to respond better to these. This is actually irresponsible fucking platforming. If Lauren Southern is a Nazi queen, you should at least write read on like one or two of the fucking examples you're gonna bring up. Like, why would you do this? Like, you like even if you fucking hate the fuck out of her, she does like all the fucking documentary shit or whatever, right? You know that she's at least gonna know one or two of these talking points, right? Everybody, she's fucking Canadian. Everybody's heard about these fucking talking words. Like, I don't, I'm not even Canadian. And I've heard the fucking, like, the last one was closed in 1996. Ground penetrating scanners found mass graves everywhere. Like, if I know about this, and I'm not Canadian, and truthfully, I don't really, that's not like my purview to like research this shit. You must know that the other person is going to have some kind of prepared response to this. How can you not know this? How can you not know anything about this? And try, and this is the second time that he's done this where he's like, I don't want to talk about that. That's just pedantry. That's just a blah, 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 blah. And then I don't know if he's about to jump into it again, but then he always segues to the, what about the other thousands of abuses? And and blah, 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 blah. Well, fuck. Well, then talk about that. Talk about that instead. And uh, I would also like you to provide evidence that nothing bad ever happened in that institution. Regardless That's not how that works. I don't know how you can provide evidence that nothing bad happened. You're the one making the positive claim. You've asserted that something bad has happened. You can't get, you can't say like, yo, that school, there was a lot of bad shit that happened. And then someone else says, really? I don't think so. It's like, well, really? Well, prove nothing bad happened. Wait, what? You're the one making the positive. You, you're the one that needs to provide the proof, motherfucker. What do you mean? I have to prove that nothing happened. How do, how do you even go about doing that? I need to find some report that studied a school to say that nothing happened at the school. Was there like a lawsuit that, that, about the conduct of the school? Was there a specific study on this specific school like you're that the oh man the fact that and this is another thing remember it's not always about what people say it's about what people don't say when he opens with something like that i would actually blind fire back because i know if he's saying that you don't know anything about what you're talking about right because if you're telling me to prove a negative that means that you can't prove the positive which means you're full of fucking shit bro and that yeah what a, what an absurd statement so that fact it doesn't change the overarching problem that these residential schools oh. are not a sordid part of our past and then we go back to the and then we go back to the generalized problem oh my god dude this is like debate like 101 right this is like the standard this is like the standard gish gallop you lay out six bad arguments somebody pushes back on one and then you talk about two three four and five six and then they're like okay well let's talk about two and then you're like okay well then they talk about one three four five and six and you're like wait hold on i thought we did one well what about argument three and they're like okay what about one two four five and six right and you're like what the fuck like wait why do you keep restating arguments that I've disproven. Holy shit. We're going to eventually have to evolve into the child and foster care system because that was an evolution of the residential schools. And also talk about the fact that within the criminal justice system of Canada, almost 40% of all the Indigenous inmates are uh, survivors of the residential school system. So the trauma... <laughs> What is that? I mean, no offense, but we're all survivors of fucking high school. Okay. Like, wait, what does that statement even mean? Why do we keep, I like how we keep opening more and more and more like bags of worms. Like when we can't, or cans of worms, I, like we keep opening more and more of these arguments without like ever actually resolving or addressing any of the points we're talking about. That occurred in the residential schools did not simply end once the schools themselves closed. They would then continue as the individuals would work into society. Um, and I guess that that's where I would leave that one. If uh, I know Tail hasn't talked very much, if he wants to, <laughs> Lance up. is like, please, for the love of God, get me out of here. In here. I think um, Lauren would do a lot better if she toned her aggression and stuck to the material facts. I think she generally does. It's harder. I, I can't. I, it's impossible for to separate this out. Being a man and being in society or whatever, women just by default always sound bitchy, and men by default usually sound aggressive or strong. I don't know how you play into that dichotomy. It's really, really, really difficult. Um, it's really hard to if you make an argument as a man and you're very impassioned, you will you can come off sounding like very dominant, very aggressive, very alpha, very much like a leader. But sometimes. 
I, it feels like women can't get away with the same type of tone. You just end up coming, sounding like a bitch. Cause I, it's just, that's just like culturally where we're at. It's a really, really hard line to walk. Maybe there are ways where she could phrase things better. I'm not sure, but yeah. Um, we'll see if the rabbit's guy, Connor's doing a good job at like remaining like relatively neutral. He doesn't sound very combative or whatever. Um, yeah. Oh. Okay. <laughs> Lance is trying to like, he's like begging in the, in the, in the ring. Tag me, tag me. Any, any, got a response to, to that. Yeah. Anybody's free to grab it if. Taylor, okay, because okay. yeah, stating prove to me that nothing bad ever happened. Oh, in thank God! Or, I shouldn't say thank God because I, technically I don't. I don't know whose side I would take in this, but like, yeah, that prove to me nothing ever bad happened. Why the, why the fuck are you supposed to do that? At school is one of the dumbest statements I have ever heard. Something bad happens in every school, whether it is the fanciest. Oh my God. But then she immediately fucking nosedived her argument and just into trying to compare the residential schools to every school. Oh no. What happened? Nicest, wealthiest, whitest school on the planet. Bad things happen at every school. The argument there is that Schools in the 1800s, deliberately removing kids from their parents, taking them in, there being abuse, mass disease, horrible conditions, is different from a school that is set up, or a housing area that is set up voluntarily for kids to go and stay there so that they can be somewhere with a high school in the area. Like, you, you have to acknowledge that there is a difference between a lot of the schools in the 70s, 80s, and 90s that when people talk about the residential school system still existing, were voluntary, they weren't being removed from their homes. They're called residential schools because they were still technically under colonial education, so they were not being taught their languages, they were not being taught their culture. And we can talk about how that could be a problem. That's a good concession. But to compare that, to the residential schools where children were being ripped away from their families. This is how you deal with this argument with whether you're conservative talking to liberals or you're liberals talking to conservatives. It's always good to acknowledge like, yo, we can talk about how like the CDC got some stuff wrong in the beginning, for sure. That's valid, I can acknowledge that. But that doesn't mean that the vaccine is gonna fucking kill you, right? Or like, bro, we can talk about the fact that yeah, the residential school shit, there was some probably fucky shit, 100%. There was definitely abuse that occurred or whatever, but that's a far different claim than fucking genocide, right? It's a different, it's a different, it's good to It's good to concede a little, give a little bit of ground and then pull them back into saying that like, this isn't what you're arguing though. Rhetorically and argumentatively, it's effective. Is just not even on the same level. And I find that extremely disingenuous. Thanks for jacking me, Destiny. Oh shit, did that meme come from your? Hold on, just for people that claim, because some people claim that I like copy Vosh's Twitter because I stole a meme or yours. Um, I don't actually steal memes from Twitter. I just If somebody posts a funny picture in my chat, I just jack it and I throw it on Twitter. So I'm sorry if that came from your Twitter, my friend. We thank you, comrade, for the meme where you uh, uh, expropriated an alpha, <laughs> our friend's Twitter. Sure. So if that's the dumbest thing you've ever heard in your life, you've lived a more privileged life than I thought possible. <laughs> Lance is actually 1 million percent correct here. Lauren is a white woman of extreme privilege because she's never actually subjected herself to a long form conversation with Lance before. So he has inadvertently stated one of the most truest things in this entire fucking conversation. <laughs> what? <laughs> like, what? I, just that ad hominem is so funny to me. Like, you've never heard a dumber argument before? <laughs> you must be incredibly privileged. <laughs> Wait, wait, what? What? What's the what's the implication there? That like, if I was selling drugs on the street, do these people engage in like a plethora of logical fallacies? My good debate friend, like debate friend, like wait, what is what is what is the implication there? And I'm just gonna say this: the burden of proof would then be upon you if you're going to assert that this school doesn't really con uh, constitute a residential school because at the end of the day, nothing bad happened here. That's not at all what she said. She said it was a residential school, but just the residential schools ran in the mid to late 1900s. Probably a lot different than the residential schools ran the. 19th century related to the same systems in place from the other residential schools in Canada then again please demonstrate that with some kind of factual evidence can we can guys is Lance streaming can we get Lance a thousand viewers so that he can do what all the other lefties do when they get big and stop debating because god damn I you notice that like they try to ride these debate vehicles until they have enough viewers and then they're like okay I don't do debates anymore blah 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 because it's because obviously they can or whatever I think it, I think we just need to get Lance we need to get Lance on that mic com or not mic com the mic from PA central committee train uh, and we need to uh yeah we need to pump him up so that he uh, leaves the this life behind.
I mean, okay, so the Canadian government argued that it wasn't a residential school, but, and I'm telling you, sure, it is registered as a residential school, but the reason is this individual who wanted to get compensation was able to make the argument, I was removed from my family to go to an education system which did not uphold my language. And the removal from the family... This is... So I normally wouldn't do this, but... um. If you really want to dump on people, um, and I, I'll never do this because I because I feel bad and I think it's mean to do it. I'll only do it against people I really hate. What Lauren should have asked is she should have said, what do you know about the court case that determined whether or not this was a residential school? And then when Lance is forced to concede that he has no fucking idea like what any of that court case is, you've completely won, not even on the merits of the argument, but just on the lack of education of your opponent. That's what she should have done instead of divulging all this information to him because now he's going to engage in a form of like, um, they call it, I think it's called hot reading, um, where somebody's having an active conversation with you and you're trying to like play off the conversation to make it seem you know things that you don't. He's getting the opportunity now because she's feeding him information about this topic that he's probably never heard of before. Was voluntary. His claim that it was his only option. And Why is it mean to do? Because I don't usually like to like be like, bro, do you even know what the fuck you're talking about? I don't know. Just <laughs> It feels like a dick move, but... And he claims that he was told he should go there, even though he only has a signed affidavit and no proof of that. People can go read the case themselves. So it's it, like, I'm just saying, if you want to say that's what residential schools were and say that's the same as all the past ones, then I'm actually not feeling that bad for the past ones. But of course, they're not the same. God, her rhetoric is so. Why would you say that? <laughs> of course. <laughs> like. Yeah, and what I'm saying is that you're being caught in the pedantry of trying to is assert that this one residential school doesn't Lower count. Northern? You're the one that brought that residential school up. You can't say that. You're the one that said the last one was closed in 96. Well, let's talk about the one that was closed in 96. Well, I don't know anything about that one. You're being pedantic. When, you know, at the end of the day, the my statement, and it remains the same, was that the last the residential 90s. school closed in 1996. That is just a factual yes, but statement. They were not oh my God. This is like some Nazi Jordan Peterson shit. Well, I was just making this statement about this only closed in 1996. No, motherfucker, you're clearly implying that the residential school in 1996 was fucking electrocuting kids that were turning in their homework late, okay? We all know what you were doing, okay? They were taking the kids that turned their math homework in late down to the fucking tuberculosis electric chair, okay, and shocking them until they ran away from the school and died of exposure. Okay? That's, what the, that's the image you're trying to conjure. Everybody in the conversation can see that's what's going on. Okay, well, can we okay and now you and now you would like to establish on top of that the 1800s yes you and if you want to the same and can you establish then that nothing bad happened in that school and if you can fine but at the end of the day again <laughs> how can you is how can you establish that and this is pedantry it, it's just like okay, this is the this pedantry. is probably one wait, of the weakest wait, gotchas i've seen so far we'll go back. It's not. it was your argument if it's a weak argument that's your fault okay Lauren, yeah. you can glorify so for another example of this and why it matters is some of the places called residential schools that were- Oh, I think when you've got a winning argument like this, I think you should hammer it home until you have a concession. Like bring it back and ask again. Like, like this is where I say um, in, in arguments like this, simple questions I think are incredibly powerful. So Lance, are you telling me that say the rates of children that died of tuberculosis in the 1996 residential school is the same as a school that would have been included in Dr. Bryce's report? Make them answer yes or no, right? Or like, okay, do you think that the way that students were treated in the 90s in residential schools is similar to how children were treated in the um, later parts of the 19th century and in the early parts of the 20th century? Make him say yes or no. Once you get him to solidify a position there, one of two things happen. Either one, he'll say, yeah, in which case he's wrong, and then you destroy him on that. Or two, he says, no, in which case, then you, you bring back your second punch of like, okay, so then do you understand why it's a little bit unreasonable for you to say residential schools had 40% of kids dying of tuberculosis, the last one was closed in 1990? You're making them all sound the same, right? Retained the name residential schools well into the 80s and 90s were even run by native bands themselves. They were handed over. So if you're going to talk about how these residential schools were committing atrocities well into the 80s and 90s, then we're going to have to start punishing and asking for apologies from native bands themselves, like the Cowasez Band, who held on to their residential school and ran it for 16 years. <laughs> he has no idea. How did they not? 
it's funny because I it's not funny actually. I hate Lance. And like he is riding these fucking indigenous arguments to so many fucking shows to do his little fucking two-line spiel about a bunch of people that he really doesn't give a fuck about at the end of the day. Let's be honest, he doesn't. He doesn't give a fuck. Um like the fact that he doesn't know anything about any of these arguments, and I've like osmosis half of this just from random people. This is another thing that I don't understand. I have gotten, and I'm super grateful, even those of you that disagree with me, because there have been a lot of you that have emailed me that have said that you, that I was wrong on something related to the indigenous issues. Generally, every time I talk about this shit, I get a lot of people from a lot of different backgrounds that email me. I had the geologist email me about the ground penetration scan. I had the, um, I've had multiple indigenous people email me. Um, I've got a friend that is like a PhD that teaches in Sasquatchuan, whatever the fuck that thing is and she's talked about her experiences so i have a lot of people that are giving me feedback and even without like having to study this like a lot like i've gotten a lot of information i would imagine that lance's community must be similar if he's literally got the fucking indigenous man's like matt i don't know if i could say mascot or that's racist but like this guy is like i play indigenous video games and talk about indigenous history and blah 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 like damn how have you guys not like looked up at least like the basic the absolute most fucking basic parts of any of these arguments how is that possible how, how you know, it's almost like, and I hate to say this, and it's very sad, but it's almost like on the majority report, when Sam Cedar got caught, not having any fucking idea what Citizens United was. Like, dog, wait, I guarantee you that if I go back to your fucking show, you guys have probably said that Citizens United needs to be revoked like four million fucking times. Like, how have you not, how do you not know what it's about? Like, even just the basic court case. Oh, man. Sorry. Jeez. Yes, it does matter what happened and what these schools turned into later on. Either of you are free to respond? <laughs> oh, sorry. They need, they're, they're like, I can't believe, they're not even, we're not even like having an argument yet. We're like having, and this is, by the way, this is why when people ask me like, what are your good debates? I don't have good debates. Because in order to have a debate, you need to one, have an agreement on descriptive fact, and then from that agreement, from your, you, you have this epistemic similarity, so you can agree on what's real, and then from there, now we are gonna have a debate on what ought we do. And that's where the real debate is. It's like, okay, we agree about this fact, this fact, this fact, and this fact, cool. We agree on the facts, now let's argue what we should do. And this is where we bring in like the morality and the ethics arguments, and then this is where we bring in like our normative frameworks. Like, is it good to do this if it hurts some and helps? That's where the real interesting is. Like, I don't ever get to have those discussions. I never get to have those discussions. Instead, it's like, you know, like, oh, well, the vaccine, you know, turns children into fucking tumor babies. Like. Okay. Or like, oh, you know, like, well, I don't think that anybody did anything wrong here. Or like, oh, like, you know, Michael Brown didn't do anything bad. Or Breonna Taylor was, you know, assassinated in bed. It's like, okay. So what you're telling me is I don't get to have any fun conversations today. It's going to be us just reading past the headline of Twitter articles. That's what we're doing today. Okay, cool. Nice. That's like 99% of my fucking conversations. <sighs> okay. I didn't, I didn't know if Tail's still here. At this point, I'm just baffled. So, okay. so far, I'll, I'll we've denied the Indian Act. We've denied the removal policy. We've denied that because one guy said a bad thing incorrectly once, therefore all atrocities never happened. No one has ever said any of that. I'm so curious how, I guess Dylan's viewers are in the middle. No one has said any of that, my dude. We've denied- no Wait, Hey, that rabbit guy, if he's a small dude, yo, I'll give him a free host. If he wants to come on afterwards and chat about his performance in this conversation, it should be good. More spotlight for indigenous issues. I am so curious what the fuck was going through this guy's mind. Oh my God. Say that's, no yeah, that's, that's what we Stop said. It. Let's let him finish. We've denied mass graves exist, even though the definition of mass is big. No. So I can't look this up on my screen because um, I don't know if it'll show bodies. I wonder what Wikipedia says mass graves are. A mass grave is a grave containing multiple human corpses, which may or may not be identified prior to burial. The United Nations has defined a criminal mass grave as a burial site containing three or more victims of execution, although an exact definition is not unanimously agreed upon. Mass graves are usually created after many people die or are killed, and there is a desire to bury the corpses quickly for sanitation concerns. A mass grave does not, does not just mean there are a lot of bodies buried somewhere. That's not at all. I, uh, I, I actually, I just kind of want to go to sleep. I, when you start off and you say something so mind-numbingly fucking stupid like that, like, you think a mass grave just means there's a lot of bodies? Like, why are you even, you're clearly not equipped to even be in the same room as people having this conversation.
Like, by your definition, literally every single cemetery is a mass grave. Like, oh, did you go to the mass grave yesterday and visit grandpa? Like, yeah. Like, what a... Wait, wait. <laughs> That's what we said. Let him, let's let him finish. We've denied <laughs> mass graves exist, even though the definition of mass is big. So... <laughs> At this point, I'm just lost. What definitions? Also, <laughs> I don't think that is the definition of mass. That's the definition of massive. <laughs> but I, no, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are we even working with? I'd really like some clarification on some of this. I mean, so that's I not true, actually, because mass shooting. It's not called a massive shooting. It's mass shooting, if I'm being fair, right? Graveyard, a mass grave? If we're going to throw oh, she even gets that point. Nice. The Indian Act as even a discussable topic. No one is literally. Have they even gotten into the Indian Act? I don't even know what the fuck the Indian Act is. Why is he bringing it up? It's because he's read about this particular thing and he's trying to find a way to shoehorn it into this conversation. Then feel free. I have no trouble with that, because as I was led to believe, the initial conversation was on restorative <clears throat> justice. If we're going to backtrack on that topic. Okay. Okay, we're not we're not backtracking on shit. If you want to talk about that topic, then start talking about that. Thank you. Good. Don't stop making concessions to this fucking loser. That topic, but like seriously. All right. So I, I literally took ten seconds to Google the word mass grave. It says a pit oh, dug no. in the ground to receive a large amount of corpses. Yep. If a lot of bodies are buried individually because they're dead, then it, like is a cemetery a mass grave? Do you have evidence that they were all individually dug? A corpse. Bro. Bro! Bro, you're making the claim! You're making the claim! It's your- it's all the onus is on you to do this! I mean, I calculated okay, I'm using, that there were on. individual bodies with the GPR. Lauren, Lauren I got it. Lauren. I'm not trying- okay, let me not be a dick, okay? I'm not gonna be a dick, I'm just gonna try to break it down. So- Are you uh, both incapable of letting me finish a sentence? According I am perfectly to Lauren, only- mm -hmm. only a few moments ago, we're talking about pits, right? According mm -hmm. to Lauren, GPR is incapable of identifying bodies, so how would it know whether or not they were all buried at the same time? Oh my god, he doesn't know what a GPR is! The ground penetrate- it's- imagine it to be like sonar or- or radar. I, like, I don't think it can tell whether or not- maybe if it was like a soft, squishy human it could, but all it can tell is that something is there. Number one. Number two, even if it can't tell exactly if there are bodies or not, it probably could tell if it was a mass grave or not. For instance, if you just get one giant clump in one area versus something that's more like dispersed, because ask yourself, this is so fucking stupid, because ask yourself this, how the fuck is a ground, ground penetrating radar scanner, how can there be a proper resolution to tell you that there can be 250 individual corpses if they're all fucking buried in one fucking like pile with each other? How could that even happen? Well, like, what is your thought? Do you think that the Do you think that the scan is going through and it's like fucking Law and Order, or not Law and Order? What's the name of that crazy show where they have the insane technology where it's like, oh my god, we've got like a three D image of everything that was fucking buried. Like the fucking NSA came in and did their like ultra high tech scans or whatever, and now we can see exactly. Like Jesus Christ. Okay, sorry. Okay, so, let, so I'll, I'll address this because I'm not Lauren. If you want me to, you, he needs to be mean. I, th at this point, I would start to get mean um, for a variety of reasons. One, I would call this guy a grifting piece of shit. If he's indigenous, he should feel even worse about being a grifting piece of shit because you clearly have not read or studied any parts of this conversation and you came to debate who you believe to be a Nazi, okay? Like, what the fuck is wrong with you? Talk about irresponsible platforming. Feel free. Okay. What I would say is that based off of all of the reading that I've made, there's plenty, and for the audience at fucking home again, I'm just trying to be descriptive. I'm not trying to justify, okay? I'm trying to be descriptive so we can all get on the same page descriptively. All right, on the same page, let's keep going. As far as I can tell from what I've seen from the historical record of the Canadian residential school system, what happened was, let's just call it cultural genocide. They took kids forcibly from people's homes, brought them to a boarding school, forced them to all live together with very limited supervision because of poor conditions, malnutrition, and uh, basically lack of supervision. Kids were abused. Kids had improper medical care. They had improper uh, nutrition. And a bunch of them died from very, e I, I don't want to say tuberculosis is an easily preventable disease, but it, from disease, okay? A significant chunk of them died from disease from the condition. Just as a heads up, this is what a GPR scan looks like, okay? 
There is a buried, I don't know if it's a water tank or a fuel tank, here in the top left, okay? This is what a GPR scan looks like, all right? It is not some ultra fucking high resolution, like ultra fucking detailed, like satellite image with with perfect fucking like resolution and contrast or whatever. Like, Jesus Christ. Conditions <sighs> that they were forced into. Okay? We're conceding that point. Now, also, on top of that, a lot of them died in fires because these these buildings were built like shit. OK, so a decent chunk of them died from fires. And then even on top of that, some a lot of kids tried to escape because the conditions were so poor and they died from exposure. That is the historical record as far as I understand it. Now, if we're going to bring this down to the American level, I can tell you that the United States of America, especially uh, before the 19th century, does have mass graves guaranteed because what we did instead is we just fucking killed native americans okay so i'm um, again this is a spectrum of awful i'm not trying to say it's good or bad i'm just trying to be descriptive so when we're talking about these graves we're probably talking about kids who died either from tuberculosis fire or exposure and they were probably buried after they were dead mass grave to me because maybe i'm just a lay person but mass grave to me implies that we are marching people out into an area we're fucking killing them, and we're throwing them in a pit. And that's how most people, especially in Canada, hear mass grave. Absolutely. That is my understanding of it. Maybe I'm wrong, but that's my understanding. As opposed to digging a hole for all of the bodies of the kids who died in the fire that all happened at once? That's, oh my god! I, I hate this guy. I actually hate this guy. I, I don't know who this guy is, but I actually super hate him. Um... I just want to say props to Lance, because I wonder if Lance realized, like, fuck, like, I'm dumb as shit. I need to try to find the one motherfucker in the universe that can look worse than me in this debate. Uh, and, and he did it. Props to him for that. I would, I would assume that that would be an impossible task, but Lance managed to pull it off, so. Yeah, do you think that the priest set the fire, or do you think it was accidental? Because that's kind of important. Do you think that there's no such thing as a mass grave at these residential schools using the conditions that you yourself hey, just me. set on the restrictions? What's up? Can I just uh, let me uh, uh, quick, quick, quick? Because I'm watching debate. We're not sidetracking. Yes, no, go. okay. But specifically about this, I want to give some insight into how just absolutely bad shit Lance is being here. Like I, I was part of the Indigenous Studies program, like the most left leaning institution in the country. And I don't know any really of the people except for Lance and a bit of Florence Southern. But what the guy just said is literally what we're taught in indigenous studies by survivors of residential schools. Like, I, is Lance trying to say that there's anything more than that? The problem that we're running into, and this is a big problem, is that when people say mass graves, which is the term, the term being used so much, um, I don't know if you understand this or not, but my understanding is that to a general population, mass graves sounds like you executed a lot of people and you wanted to basically hide the bodies or just throw them all in a fucking pit and walk away from it. But so if there is like a cemetery where a bunch of people were buried and like they died, even if they died of like tuberculosis and then it was forgotten or whatever, you wouldn't call it a mass grave typically. No, there is. They're unmarked graves. Sure. Yeah. And, and, and if they're unmarked graves, that's still bad too. Definitely. But like mass grave carries with it like a very specific, like almost Holocaust like definition to it. Um, yeah. Yeah. But, so, but sorry. So because I joined a bit late, Lance is arguing this whole an hour and a half has been on. Well, the problem is Lance doesn't argue anything because he doesn't know anything about this. But the problem is the other guy is trying to make this argument that like, well, a mass grave is just anywhere where lots of people are buried. And that's what he's using to say mass grave, which is stupid as fuck. But that's the, but the entire, how long has this been going for? I don't know, but this whole conversation is literal AIDS. Not, like, yeah, it's pretty sad. None of those left-leaning people like did any homework on like what anything said about anything. So they're basically just getting steamrolled the whole time. Which is especially troubling because th to them, like Lauren is literally like a fucking Nazi queen and, and... So I don't know why yeah. they didn't come more prepared. Like, they didn't know anything about the first gravesite found. They didn't know anything about, like, Lance is citing this report by Dr. Bryce. I don't think he realizes that that report was in 1907. It wasn't a modern-day thing. Like, so, yeah, I don't know. It's just, but, yeah. Okay. Go back to watching this. Okay, bye. All right, bye. <laughs> Stop. We're linking shit in chat. Restriction of the definition of that term. Fine tale, you fucking win, okay? Maybe seven kids were all buried at the same time and it's a mass grave. Oh, I don't know if Lauren's getting mad or something. Oh, you totally should not concede this point. Why the fuck would you concede that point?
Can we get to the fucking descriptive part of it? Like, can we, can we get back to like... You, you, you should not give that term. Absolutely, you should not give that term. Okay? Reality. I would love to. I, I never please left jump it. in here. <laughs> okay, I have a question for you. Um, so the... We're, we're talking about the mass graves that the media have alleged happened, that Lance has been tweeting about, that progressives have been tweeting about, and you're saying that they are mass graves where people just dug pits because I just want to let everyone know GPR technology can only find anomalies in the soil. It can't find bodies. So the way that they are trying to find or how they claim they are trying to find these individual uh, bodies or find these numbers, how they're getting the 250 number, how they're getting that 750 number is they're saying they're finding burial spots and graves. And that's why some have also been mistaken for great for that they've said they were you know native children buried but it ended up just being a graveyard so if we're talking about gpr technology that is finding individual graves and these are what is being called mass graves they literally cannot be mass graves because it's only detecting individual burial spots so this is also true i believe that when they went to look for a lot of these like burial spots i think it was first nations people that were leading them to spots where it's like we believe there was a cemetery here or something that's that's my understanding that i remember reading from our article i could be wrong on that but that was my understanding for how they conducted a lot of these searches if somebody knows something different in chat feel free to link it um that, that shows something different but it's not like they're not just going all around canada like indiscriminately zapping the ground and trying to find anomalies obviously that would be impossible right so no, this whole idea that you're saying that, yes, it was pits and bodies were thrown in. No, based on the technology that was used and the way they are counting and getting these numbers, it's impossible. Nope, I've already conceded it. You can't take it back. Oh, <laughs> dude, well, I, oh, I hate doing the bit. Uh, no, no, no. Bastia didn't do this to me that much. Um, oh my God, when, my, when I have a debate partner that is trying to like take the wind out of my sails and it's like, Bro, this is not a point we're going to concede. Forever. That's the record now. Oh, okay, I see. All right. Mass graves, whatever. Um, <laughs> oh, no. And look at Lance. Now Lance feels like he, he won that argument. I got, okay, reason, okay. If that's, if that's, to... Oh, that that should have ne that absolutely should have never been a point you conceded. There's just absolutely no reason to concede that point. That, like, it's so silly. Establish what crimes happened to talk about retributive justice is we need to know what the retributive justice we're discussing was for, right? Sure. That's why we're Ab discussing absolutely. This. Okay, so I'd, I'd I'd like to answer that one for you. Uh, this is a question to both counterpoints and Lauren. Uh, as of now, how many priests and nuns have been convicted for sexual crimes against children as a result of the uh, residential school system? Dude, I'm on the same page. If priests and nuns committed sexual assault against kids put them in jail but like you know build a mask never mind but like this I... shit happened in the u.s this shit happened at boys schools in florida this shit happened in ireland it was horrific and i hope sure. uh, every Do... one of those things is investigated we don't disagree on that and if it didn't happen it should happen what sure. we're disagreeing on is whether churches should be burned down today and whether there were mass graves Rhetorically, this is a good, right? You So you make the concession immediately. Like, don't fight on that point. Yeah, if this should happen, it should be investigated. Absolutely, right? Um, but like, we're not talking about that. We're talking about like fucking mass graves and genocide, right? So and Ken, do, you, do you want to attempt answering the question? Because Lauren seems unable to. How many? I don't, I don't know. No. <laughs> Dude, Lance is such an asshole. And that's okay. I think it's funny being an asshole. I just think that like, if you're going to be an asshole in a conversation, I think you have to earn it. You've got to like, you have to establish like some facts, show that your opponent is engaging in bad faith. Then I think you can start coming in with like the fuck you bitch, like take them out with those big, with those big ad homs. I'm, I'm all for it. I am totally fucking here. If you want to dick out in a fucking debate, I think it's funny. I think it can knock people down a peg. I think it makes you look good. makes them look bad, but it's like a Jackie Chan movie, right? <clears throat> Jackie Chan wins his fights doing some crazy fucking shit, but he always starts every fight from behind, right? Jackie Chan doesn't walk into a, a club with like three friends and beat the shit out of one dude. He's always down in numbers. He's always down in position. He always doesn't have a weapon at the start. He's always like naked and fucking, I think in every fucking Chinese Jackie Chan movie, I think he's always naked in one scene. I don't know why, right? But like, th like if, if you want to, if you want to have your glorious finish, you have to earn it. You need to do something to earn it. You can't just open with that because then you just look like an asshole, I think. Oh, How many? I 
Oh, no, no, no. I don't want to answer how many I was going to back her up on a moral point. So, no, please okay, tell me. Sure. No, I'm, I'm sure we're all against pedophilia. So as of now, there's been 40 convictions, and that means that there's been 37,951 complaints that have been levied. They have not been pursued. As of now, an estimated 5,000 priests, nuns, and teachers have committed sex crimes against these children, and they're not being charged for that the first time. So it is rhetorically it's effective for Lance to cite numbers here. You can always do that and, and look good. Um, this is going to be like a really sad fact, but the reality is that pushing cases through like this is probably never going to happen. How the fuck are you going to do that, right? If you get like three kids that come up and it's like, yo, this person raped me, how do you even begin to take that person to court and like file charges? Like, th there's... How are you ever going to begin to? We saw this right. We now that we now we've watched JCS videos. So now we're legal experts, right? Like, how are you ever? Why would a DA? Or I don't know how your set of shit is up, DA. I don't know what you have. But like, how would your prosecuting body in, in Canada decide to start allocating resources to these crimes? Like, this group of people said that they were raped, you know, 40 years ago by this priest or not. Like, I'm sorry, it sucks, but like, how 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 could you ever get a conviction there, right? Like anyone was put to task for this was in 2008 and that was somebody who had molested 17 boys and that was the first major conviction so this is what i mean when i say that there hasn't actually been uh retributive justice in what how, uh, yeah sorry fuck it's i connor i hope he knocks this one out of the park because you're the goddamn fucking ex-cop you just you can't it's so hard to do investigations on these types of crimes. It's never going to happen. I'm sorry. You just, the, the, the circumstantial evidence isn't going to be there, your DNA and shit, and your direct testimony is literally probably only going to come from like those involved who said that like, oh, that person raped me. So it's literally one person's word against another person's word. You're not going to get big convictions like that. It's just not, it's not going to happen. Like, I'm sorry. Um, Connor should know this because he's got the cop background or whatever. In this case, right? If we're if we're dealing with thousands and thousands of priests, nuns, and teachers with sexually molested children, that would be a place to start. I mean, unlike the Catholic churches, who at this point we do not know who's burning them down. In this case, we do know who committed these heinous crimes. I don't like the cover that he provides. There. We don't know who's burning these churches down. I think it's probably pretty obvious, right? Like, okay, then to address this head on. Yep. This is this is where. Like, again, I am not your enemy in this fight at all. So if anybody touched any kid of any background and abused them, then what I think the system should do to them is not even fit for Twitch, okay? And I don't care who that person is, what part, what institution they're a part of, whether or not they're a member of my race, whether or not it was an institution supported by the government. Go after them with the full force of the law, and punish them accordingly. Would you? The big rhetorical question here is what they should ask is, why haven't they? Do they think that the government is providing active cover for child rapists for cases they know they could go after? Or is the evidence just incredibly scant? Both state that uh, at this point, the Catholic Church should stop withholding the names of those who may be guilty. What does that even mean? If you're talking about putting them public and you're saying may be guilty, no, I don't think people on trial for sex crimes that haven't been confirmed guilty should be put public because usually what happens is if they're found innocent or- Yeah, sorry, but uh, when you motherfuckers are running around burning down churches, I would not want to be somebody that worked like tangentially to one of these schools and have my name released on a fucking list that Vivian is going to be spreading around fucking Discord. Fuck that. Falsely accused, their lives get destroyed for something they didn't do. So until there is a crime and a conviction that happens, of course, keep the names private. But I think those convictions should be, um, you know, they should try to get those convictions if the person is guilty to the utmost of their ability. Now we have to recognize, and this is a horrible thing, but it's very, very difficult to prove these crimes retrospectively that happened a long, long time ago. And if we're going to have a justice system at all, if we are going to have a system that says innocent until proven guilty, that has to be the standard. We can't just throw people in jail because we think, or just based on an accusation without proof. And you know, that sucks. It sucks that reality is like that. But you know what also sucks? People who did nothing going to jail for the rest of their lives for a sex crime they didn't commit. That's just, yeah.
I'm curious why we keep setting this as a long, long time ago. I was still figuring out Windows 95 when the last of the boarding schools in Canada was closed. There were even still a few that are open today in the United This guy is the dumbest motherfucker. He actually is beyond fucking stupid. I can't, I, it is irresponsible that Lance brought this guy to this debate and that's saying something. I don't know what he, what video game he stumbled out of, but he needs to go back to playing those. I recommend League of Legends, my friend. United States, these are- Do you think that's self-harm? I might have to delete my VOD for that. I know that you can still tell people to- I don't know if you can tell people to kill themselves or like play League of Legends. I don't know if you can like wish that harm on somebody. That might be like a- That might be TOS now on Twitch. <laughs> Sorry. I take it back. You can do other forms of whatever, but not- I'm not wishing League upon you. I'm sorry, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I don't mean that. Ongoing crimes. We address that, keep up. Then address it again. Okay, not to mention, even a, a rape committed against anyone in the 90s would be very difficult to prove and get evidence for today. I'm not even yep. sure when we started getting these systems in place for rape kits in Canada. Like, when did that even come about? I'd have to research that, but this is, like, it's very difficult to prove these historical uh, cases. I, I just want to address this point head on because I don't want to feel like we're dodging. Okay, so what we said was that during the early 20th century and during the late 19th century, there were brutal fucking conditions. And as these things became less and less acceptable, some of these schools were turned over to native control. Some of these schools that ended in 1996, as Lance pointed out, that Lauren supposedly has a study for, that I don't have a study for, was literally just a fucking boarding school for Native American kids. Now, I can't prove to you that no sex abuse happened because whenever there's fucking teenagers- This is a layup for Lance and the rabbit guy if they knew anything about that school. Did anything bad happen? Oh, then just say it. And then boom, you shut them down completely. Well, actually, in that 1996 school, 20% of children came out of there accusing, not even with convictions, accusing um, the, the administrators of sexual assault or sexual abuse. Oh, 20% of those people uh, committed suicide after that. Boom, that's a layup. That's a fucking layup. If you want to cite that 96 school, you need to have at least one data point to prove how it was so fucking horrible. Like anywhere fucking sex abuse happens sex abuse happened at my white suburban oh my god i'm sorry i love children i have a child i get i hate it when i hear people like anytime a child is touched there should be punishment okay bro we get it wow child rape bad thank you move go to the next fucking thing i don't need to hear you like talk about how horrible this is for fucking five minutes okay bullshit fucking school kids were doing cocaine in the fucking bathroom and having fucking sex i can't tell you that nothing bad happens anywhere okay but what i can say is that if you wanted to pick a school that you wanted to live in as a fucking time traveler then you wouldn't want to go to the one in the 1920s because there was probably a significant chance that you would get your ass kicked and nobody would give a shit you would die of tuberculosis or you would die in a fucking fire whereas if you went to the boarding school in 1992 and it was native american run and it was fucking then basically there's a strong chance that it was just a normal boarding school with all of the boarding school problems that we have today so that's what i'm saying okay so okay, the key, so the key difference clear. here I, wait, I just have wait, one quick point wait wait no when i'm talking nobody talks uh so far um, i just got the time uh so far lauren has talked more than both lance and tail combined uh so i want to make sure that i give lance and tail some time to speak uh, uninterrupted for a little bit well tail that's because they have nothing to say they have no arguments they have no data. They don't know the cases that they're talking about. They don't know the history of the stuff. Yeah, of course they haven't said anything. They have nothing to say. Uh, Lance? <laughs> sure, I just- Lance, oh God, this is like he didn't have his hand up and the teacher called on him to fucking talk about like, well, can you tell us now in clear terms, what were the four primary contributions to why the United States had a revolutionary war? Well, the British colonies had a revolutionary war, I should say. I wanted to address counterpoints. Uh, the difference there between what you stated and what happened is that they didn't choose to go to these schools. They were taken and forced to go to these schools. So even if you do addressing. say that there are institutions in which there are multiple people committing uh, sex crimes and whatever that is, this is still a situation in which the children were forcibly removed from their parents and forced to be in these schools. So again, as wards of the state, everything that occurs to them is a responsibility of either- No, that's not how that works. Just because it's a state-ran school, doesn't mean that it's gonna be perfect. There's always going to be liabilities like everywhere. Like, sorry, by the way, in US schools, bad things happen. In US public schools, bad things happen. Like that's just gonna be the case everywhere. If something bad happens, the state should be liable. So you either sue them or whatever, but like it's not like you're ever gonna have no bad things happening anywhere. That's just such a stupid standard to set. Either the Catholic church or the government of Canada. Okay, let's let's get to the meat of this real quick because no one's like how bad things happen. Lance was just given an argument to tug as long as he could, and that was his one response. And no one's denying bad things are bad. What the only disagreement here is 
You guys seem to think there are mass graves. There is no evidence for them. Um, do you still think there are mass graves after this discussion? How many bodies have been exhumed at these graves that have recently been discovered? So that seems to be the only thing that you're trying to propose as your conditions. But if you didn't listen to what Dylan just said, he said that you'd spoken the most in this debate. And so he was going to give Tail of Twin Rabbits a chance to speak. <laughs> Dude, I'm going to say Lance is the most squad W motherfucker. <laughs> oh, that was a misuse. I'm so sorry, Train. My bad. Oh, my God. Okay, he's happy to. I was just trying to get back on topic and then to the church burnings. Your topic, but, but yeah. Well, Tal, that's the you, topic we agreed on. Okay. Tell if you want to speak, you can. You... <laughs> he has nothing to say. Why did they agree to do this debate? Why did they agree to do this? Why? You're free to speak. At this point, I'm a little bit lost. There's been a lot of philosophical quibbling over the definition of the word mass grave to the point where someone had to Google it because they didn't even know the definition coming into the game. Bro, you didn't know the definition. You said it meant mass. There were a lot of bodies. Game, which I think is a little inappropriate. If you're going to be discussing a topic, you should at least be mildly prepared. What is this projection? Oh my God. And someone, you're free to speak. At this point, I'm a little bit lost. There's been a lot of philosophical quibbling over the definition of the word mass grave to the point where someone had to Google it because they didn't even know the definition coming into the game, which I think is a little inappropriate. If you're going to be discussing a topic, you should at least be mildly prepared. And when we're talking about things like ground penetrating radar, I again go back. If we're going to challenge the findings of those who have done the research then you're challenging the foundation of archaeology in the Americas. If you would like to do that and lay out your argument for a better technique for identifying locations that should be excavated, I welcome you to do so. You haven't proposed anything remotely resembling that. What you did instead was to say that you went to school with a person whose name you can't pronounce, who is somehow vaguely related to a company who's Oddly not listed anywhere on the company's prospectus. I, I would actually lose it. I would lose it at this point. Um, I think I would lose it. I think this would be the straw for me. And then I would start getting very, very, very mean and very personal. That's not terms. That's not definitions. And that's certainly not facts. That's just random anecdotes. I have just posted the Lord, article hold up. in I got the this. chat. Shh, Connor, shut the fuck up. Lord, please, for the love of God. Tale of Twin Rabbits, I'm pretty sure your brain is running on 1995, okay? Never mind. Connor, fucking, you're clear for takeoff. <laughs> We're fucking 30 minutes into this goddamn debate talking about, like, I don't know, terms about fucking murder and descriptive <laughs> reality and history and all that kind of shit. And you want to talk to Lauren about fucking GPR and whether or not she can offhand fucking come up with a new way to conduct anthropology? I don't give a shit. Fucking catch up. Because basically what you're doing right now is you're acting smarter than everybody else in the fucking room while saying <laughs> absolutely fucking nothing. Absolutely fucking true. Okay. Thank you. Never mind, Connor. You've redeemed yourself. For the whole debate so far, you're at fucking 9 out of 10. Keep it up, Chief. I don't know if I can say chief in this debate, actually, sorry. If you want to take your fucking galaxy brain fucking 10 head and your individual experience, then please educate us. But if I have to hear fucking Lauren's a dumbass about GPR one more fucking time for 35 fucking seconds, I'm going to fucking lose it. So either educate us, talk about the subject, or shut keep the fuck up, up with the fucking conversation, or just don't bring up GPR again. Because I don't give a fuck and I don't trust Lauren to reinvent anthropology in the next fucking 10 minutes. Okay, okay so well, let's by move. The way, I I just wait, really need to make wait, the point wait, that wait, I am not wait, wait, making wait, this up. I am wait, citing. Wait, wait. No, no, no Lauren, Lauren, Lauren. Okay, sorry. Please, in the future, do not do that. Okay. Yes, sir. Rabbits, I want you to respond to Connor. He said a lot. Or if you want to respond, it's completely up to you. <laughs> I think your brain is still running in 1995. That was a good one. I mean, if he needs to take a little break and get a glass of water, that's fine. I oh, my God. What a loser. What a sub you and fucking piece of shit. God, this guy is such a cringe fucking demon. This guy is a cringe demon. He's the grown-up version of this guy. Oh my, oh my. Well, I'm not entirely sure, actually. It just sort of happened, and I enjoyed it, and I just sort of stuck with it. The end. <laughs> I have no objection. Okay. <laughs> he's giving... He's giving so much... I, it's like, this is, I'm like, it's like a League of Legends game, okay? It's like a League of Legends game. When I'm playing League, I'm getting ganked 
fucking every fucking two seconds, okay? Four man bot, five man bot, four man bot, six man bot, because my own jungle comes and feeds. I'm watching this guy in a debate, and the moderator's cutting off the other people saying, hey, would you like a time to speak uninterrupted? Yes, I would love to speak. I'll speak uninterrupted for, I'll do it for 10 hours. I'm a fucking streamer. I'll speak as much as you fucking want me to. I, it's a debate. I came here to talk, motherfucker. And this guy has nothing to say. How? How you have nothing to say? This is your fucking schoolhouse, dude. You, this is your purview. This is the, the, the whole subject matter that you fucking spent your whole fucking Twitch career researching, supposedly. Okay? Do you, have, do you remember a story or a plot line, plot line from any of the indigenous games that you say you grind on stream? Like, what, what are you doing? What is happening? Bro. Wake up. You're still on Red Fool's couch. <laughs> I want to throw it over to Lance since again. Um, I time. <laughs> He's Dylan is begging me. Dylan. Now Dylan in the background. Don't confuse this for Dylan being a good moderator, okay? Because Dylan in the background is thinking like, "Oh my God, the fucking Nazi woman has spoken for like fucking fifty minutes, and these two other dumb fucks that were supposed to shit on her haven't said fucking shit." I need you guys to talk more because everybody's gonna talk about how this was irresponsible platforming. Lance, please. He's probably damning Lance. Lance, I got people in chat linking me studies. Maybe you should look at the fucking Twitch chat. Neither of you are talking, so you got plenty of time to fucking read. Please come up with a better argument. Dylan's probably freaking out because he knows he's gonna get shit on for this fucking debate. <laughs> it is uh, extremely lopsided at the moment. I want to make sure both sides get ample speaking time. Lance, do you want to say anything? Uh, well, just uh, to counterpoint's uh, statement there, if Lauren is making the assertion that she believes, in this case, that uh, this technology is not representational of the fact that there are mass graves, or perhaps we're lost again in the semantics of what constitutes a mass grave, then that is not on uh, tail to have to uh, educate anyone on. He's simply stating that she is putting into- I'm sorry, you dumb, brick-shaped faced motherfucker. You are literally here to educate people. It is a debate on these very topics. What the fuck do you think you came here for? To question the findings, which have already been agreed upon, by the way, by most of Canadians. Um, this is not something that's- uh I, 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 just for the record, I told her in advance that this is the land strategy. What he'll do is he says one thing, you call him out on it, and he always runs back to those other five points, and then you call him out on point two, and he'll always run back to the other five points, then you call him out on three, and he always runs back, always the same thing. Notice how he's just, he's repeating over and 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 over, and over again. He's repeating the same fucking things. Like, well, everyone agrees on this. Well, every blah, blah, blah. well all this atrocities happen. Like, bro. Dean. Uh, disproven. This is, uh, again, being stuck in semantics. And I can see Lawrence losing her mind in, in the process of hearing. I would be losing my mind. <laughs> this. Um, there's a reason why multiple people, including uh, everyone here's favorite, Justin Trudeau, has come forward and stated that, yes, we'd like to apologize for this. We have acknowledged that this was genocide, that it is. A Trudeau, I'm pretty sure when we looked it up last, now... I could be wrong. Maybe there's been a more recent statement. But when we looked it up last, I'm pretty sure Trudeau wasn't willing to go as far as to say it was a genocide. I think he specifically did not say that term. When we looked it up, he kind of like danced around it. But that's not that relevant to this. An ongoing process. He's become the first sitting prime minister to say that. All uh, the relevant I'm facts. I'm a fan of Justin Trudeau. All the relevant facts. But I think facts. it's reached a point now All where the this is not something facts. that is being, uh, let's just say, debated. If it's not being debated, then why are you here to debate it, you dumb motherfucker? What are you here for? What is wrong with you? But I'll, I'll, I'll sure. leave the tail to, to finish that. Joel and I understood that the topic... <laughs> I'll leave it to tail to finish. <laughs> They're trying to bail each other. Dylan's messaging him. He's like, bro, tail, fucking... Or, or, or Lance is messaging him. Like, Dylan keeps messaging him. He says we need to do better, bro. I gotta hand this off to you because I don't know anything about this. Please... Was a point now where this is not something that is being, uh, let's just say, debated. But I'll, I'll, I'll leave sure. the tail to, to finish that. Joel and I understood that the topic was supposed to be retributive justice, and we still haven't talked about that. So talk and about I'm... it, Broby. Can I respond? Just a two-second response here. Oh, no. you can or, hold on. Not, just okay, hold I thought on. you were done. Hold okay, on. you can continue. Hold on. Well, I got interrupted there by counterpoints for just a moment. I was willing to let him finish, I suppose. But in any case, I'm not particularly interested in educating you. If you would like to talk to me after. <laughs> then why are you here? 
I just, it's so dumb. Bro, if any alt writer wants to talk to me and they want me to educate them on like fucking culture or some shit like that, like, I'll talk all day if you want to do this shit. What the fuck? What do you mean? That's fine. I'd be happy to provide you plenty of information on the subject of ground penetrating radar. I know it frustrates you when I say that term. I'm not concerned with that. And that wasn't what the thesis of my statement actually was. I said, we're quibbling over definitions because I haven't been confronted with any facts. So that's my concern. If you would like to somehow contradict what I said there, you, you haven't said anything. Feel free to do so. But as I understood it, the topic here was about retributive, retributive justice. So I would like to know what the two of you mean when you talk about that so that we can discuss it. If we're going to talk about retributive justice, it sounds like we... It, well, retributive means to, to like, um... Assessment of justice based on the punishment of offenders rather than... Okay, yeah, okay. Just making sure it didn't mean, like, some crazy shit that I didn't know about. Okay. If we're going to talk about retributive justice, we kind of have to talk about the wrongs that were done first. Because that's, like, that's kind of sort of half the equation. Retributive, which... I'm guessing shares the root with the word retribution refers to punishment or some sort of retributive action for a past wrong that has been done. So we kind of need to talk about the past wrong if we're going to talk about what kind of what type of retribution is appropriate for it. Like, I'm not interested in discussing. Dare mansplain? Okay, I'm going to mansplain. Uh, don't you oh, dare! Give me one minute because I just really need to respond to this one point. It's we. I we have to determine if there was a genocide or not because that was part of this topic. So that's why we are discussing this. And I really need to respond to the fact that Lance and Tale of Twin Rabbits have just spent this whole, their whole last chat talking about how I have not provided any proof and I'm trying to reestablish the whole field of archeology span and anthropology and that I've made this up. That is not true. I have linked the Globe and Mail article in our Discord chat. And this is what the researcher who found the initial graves that sparked this all off said my findings cannot be confirmed unless excavations are done which is why we need to pull back a little bit and they are probable probable burials they are targets of interest for sure said dr bellio who has about a decade of experience in the field including working with the rcmp she said the sites have multiple signatures that present like burials but we do need to say that they are probable until one excavates because we actually don't know the story behind them we don't know if there's even bodies in there we don't know if this is an overgrown graveyard and these are the facts i'm citing the researcher this is not something i am making up and you guys need to stop asserting that okay. sure uh, so can i can I respond to that? Or? Yes, I, I just want to make it very clear. I, I see Connor raising your hand. Um, I really want to give some, and I'm going to, <laughs> this is the last time I'm going to do it. He's trying so hard. Lance and Rabbit, please say anything. You're getting crushed. Please, please say a single fucking thing. Please. So please take uh, advantage of the opportunity that you guys have. Like, <laughs> Has there ever been a debate in the history of all of fucking Dylan kind? Dylan, are you here? Where you've had to beg somebody on one side to talk more? Like, please, please say something. Please, bro. My whole Twitch fucking channel is going to get fucked if you don't fucking say something. Please, bro. Please. The, the, um, the difference in speaking time is very great right now. So I want to make sure that both sides are probably represented. Lance, uh, floor is yours. Yeah, sure. Okay, so when it comes to uh, the finding of the children, what you're doing, Lauren, is you're not pre uh, presenting any facts. What you're doing is that you're trying to selectively use parts of an article, the Globe and Mail article, I have it before <laughs> me right now, in order to assert a conspiratorial claim. Now, if we look at, let's say, the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, all right, which is the largest study that has ever been done in this field. It is one that was started in 2008. It cost over $100 million to do. Again, this is the same Gish Gallup. This is the same Gish Gallup. This is what he does. You now now you're going to go back and you're going to dance to the 50 other points. Go back, dance, get challenged in one argument, go back and dance around all the points. Get challenged in another argument, go back and dance on the point. He does this so many times. It was one that interviewed thousands upon thousands, again, of indigenous survivors who had experienced the horrors and atrocities of the residential schools. The consensus and the broad consensus by this commission was overwhelmingly that not only did this constitute genocide, but that there was multiple, multiple children who had died at these schools and yes, were buried near the schools themselves. This was part of 
of the findings of the Truth and Reconciliation Commission. So what you're trying to do and what you often do and what I'm sure Rebel News has taught you very well to do is to try and take selective parts of an article like you have here in the Global Mail and then utilize that to try and extrapolate a theory. And that's just not going to cut it in terms of what we're talking about now. Uh, I think eventually we should move on to the idea of Catholic churches because that's something you wanted to talk about. But one of the final points that I wanted to move on to, if you want to talk about Canadian genocide and talk about the process, is move on to the child care and the foster care system. But I see Counterpoints has his hand up, so I'll let him talk. Yeah. Okay, wait. Please. One more one second. I just want to give one last opportunity to tell. Rabbit, please. Can you say something? You were supposed to be the expert here. Please. Connor. Law and order. No. Okay. I just want to give one last opportunity to tell two rabbits to speak at this point so we can rebalance the time slots. Rabbit? I'm fine. Counterpoint seems very interested to go. Okay, I found it. <laughs> I, I, I know it won't count for anything or whatever, but, like, I hope that Lance gets, like, actually lambasted for how absolutely fucking embarrassing. Um, this, is, um, this is twice now in a row that he's gone into one of these conversations um, against somebody that he should deem, like, again, remember, in Lance's eyes, Lauren is still, like, the fucking, like, covert Nazi queen, right? He went into a debate with JF, not getting, not being prepared to talk about fucking eugenics, when JF is literally, like, a eugenics na nationalist fucking person, like, that's, like, all he talks about, right? Like, he came in here without knowing anything about anything, like, I'm sorry, did you think that, like, the cute little, like, pat on the ass you got from fucking Sam Cedar and from all the other little dipshit shows that you run around and you do your little spiel, like, oh, hey, guys, I just want to talk about all the headlines that I read, and it's real bad, right? Yeah, real bad. Yeah, I love the First Nations people, like, oh, yeah, bro, like, oh, yeah, the Cherokee, yeah, oh, yeah, dude, all of those guys, I love them, <laughs> right, Canadian, I think, right, yeah, I love that shit, bro, yeah, it's so horrible, right, bro, yeah, like, you really haven't read a single fucking thing about anything you're talking about? You actually came into this debate so fucking unprepared that you didn't know anything about the first mass burial site that was found? You didn't know anything about the 96 school or the court case that went against that school for the child that was trying to claim that it was a residential school? You didn't know anything about any of this? You don't know how the ground penetrating radar scans work at all? You don't know anything about any of the statements that the First Nations people have made about any of these burial sites? You don't know the year that that Dr. Bryce report was, was reported that you keep citing over and over again like it's still relevant? Like you thought those 1,600 kids were represented of the 150,000 in the entire, like how do you not know a single fucking thing about this? You don't know anything about this conversation? What the fuck? What is he doing here? He Lance has found himself in the in the in the nightmare scenario where you wake up and you're like, "Oh my god. I have a fucking report due today for my fucking history class." And then you remember, "Oh wait, I'm fucking 29. I graduated 7 years ago. What the fuck?" Like he's actually that. He's doing that right now. Holy shit. Thank you. So, you said no facts were given, but basically what I would say is Lauren and I have come at you with a bunch of descriptive facts, and not only that, they fit a shitload of your narrative. We've already said that there's probably a few thousand students that died uh, in the residential school system. As a matter of fact, the current uh, official estimate from the Truth and Reconciliation Commission puts it about 4,300, okay? Uh, based off of the narratives, uh, collaborated or whatever the fuck the word is, at the Truth and Reconciliation, um, it was largely Poor conditions, disease, abuse, uh, exposure, and fire. Those are the majority of the things. The primary contention that I've had historically in this entire conversation is whether or not we should use the term mass graves, which I get is a The rabid guy privated his Twitter. Uh, these guys are unreal, dude. These guys are actually unfucking believable a little bit pedantic for two, tale of two rabbits or whatever. But at the same time, when somebody says mass graves to me, I'm assuming marching a bunch of children out into the fucking woods and executing them and then shoving them into a ditch and then throwing fucking dirt on them. And as I've already conceded, if that was reality, then I would be doing some fucked up shit right about now. OK, and it's not that any of this is not awful, but there's a spectrum of fucking awful. So whenever I'm trying to be accurate descriptively and I'm presenting these facts to you, these facts that are like ad agreed upon by the people who support your narrative. The reason why I'm doing that is because I don't want people to go out there and say, there are mass graves in Canada. There, there's 4,000 kids that were discovered. And basically the- the Wait, what? Why did Lauren do this? Organized us in the debate. 
it would have been significantly better if she's you versus Lauren. She canceled and asked for a 2v2. I don't know if that's true or not. I asked her. Um, or we'll see what she says. Um, but, like, even if she did... Who, so? I'm trying to think in her position. It might it might be better. So I'm still looking at the meta optics of this. I think if I was in Lauren's position, um, I think I probably would do that. Um, just because everybody's just going to call you a Nazi anyway. But the problem that I would have with this is, uh, in terms of believing Lance, is Lance already lied one time about trying to... Um, Lance already lied one time about setting this debate up. Begging for debates? So I think um, I think Lauren's original tweet here was something about how like Lance has been begging me for a debate for a long time. And he's like, begging for debates? We've never actually spoken before. This was set up through a third party who asked me if I'd debate you, already lying and this hasn't even taken place. And she says, a third party? The dude said he fucking works for you as your booker. What are you on about? I don't have a booker. I mean, I'll talk to him now about whatever he's saying publicly. And she said, I even asked him to provide proof that he worked for you before he even considered the debate, which he did. So he showed that he was like a moderator of his Discord or some shit, which he did and repeated that he manages getting in contact with personalities for you. I can certainly post screenshots publicly, but I'll let you chat to him first. He's a nice guy. I'm not claiming, now look at this. I'm not claiming we haven't worked together. He asked me if I'd be interested because he has your contact after he'd reached out to you. He's not my booker as I don't have one before. Um, but again, I'll, I'll talk to him about this statement and you, um, that you were begged as that's false. And the funny thing is, is that somebody else comes down here and they even link a video of, um, I think Dylan saying that Lance has been asking her for a debate. The first thing I would like to say about this is this wasn't even my idea. Uh, and I'm not doing that to move blame, but I just want to describe the process that went into scheduling this. So Lance has been trying to schedule this event for a uh, long period of time. He wanted to talk to Lauren Southern specifically about um, issues like re uh, retributive justice and vigilante justice. And if Canada is, of course, guilty of the uh, accusation of genocide. Now... He has been trying to get this for a while and has scheduled this a few times. The first so like I, I mean, yeah. So maybe like yeah. A lot of miscommunication over in the Lance factory, I guess. Um I'm just curious. I asked Lauren or whatever. So she said, No, um, it's the guy who claims he's not his booker. He begged me multiple times, and I responded saying that I'll only do the debate if it's a two on two. The Canadian government has been committing genocide. Oh shit, that sounds fucking awful. That sounds like the fucking Canadian Mountain Police walked a bunch of kids out into the woods and shot them in the back of the head and threw them in shallow ditches. That's what people think when you say that shit. So when I'm being descriptive and I'm being pedantic and I'm trying to boil out these fucking definitions, it's because when people say that shit, they have emotional and mental and logical justification to go throw Molotov, cocktail, uh, Molotov cocktails at shit. But when you say instead that there were horrific conditions, the, the Canadian government committed cultural genocide, it was not addressed up until like 1996. On top of that, there's systemic issues that extend into the modern day that are unaddressed that Canadians only seem willing to reconcile with right now that's a massively different narrative. Now, maybe the anger still needs to be there. Maybe the passion still needs to be there. Maybe the reformation still needs to be there. But at the same time, it's not the same as mass execution of children. So that's where- Connor has done a really good job at bringing it back to this point multiple times. I'm glad that he's done it. I don't know in the audience's eyes if they can see that this point is being brought back to and evaded multiple times, but he's done a good job at centering it around this. Yeah. I'm being pedantic and annoying. Sure. Uh, yeah, I'd like to address that directly. So you've already acknowledged that under the conditions of the residential school system, every single death that occurs is because they are, again, wards of the state, right? So it doesn't matter if they're dying from tuberculosis, doesn't matter if they're dying from malnutrition, starvation, they're still deaths that are responsibility of the provincial or federal government, correct? I Okay, what I would say is, while not necessarily biting that bullet in full, I do think that it is their responsibility and it is their wrong. Uh, so I'm not trying to split hairs here, I'm trying to be very specific. Some of these things are not controllable, okay? Fires, tuberculosis, all that kind of stuff. Some of that stuff isn't controllable. But at the same time, there's something called liability, which means responsibility. The government was in charge of these people. The, uh, the Native Americans whose children were forcibly taken by the government lost something that is very important to them. 
there is something, th there's nothing more important to me. I'm just going to counter this guy's point right now because I already know Lance isn't because he doesn't know anything at all about this topic. But the easy layup here is Lance should say, actually, some of these things were controllable. Things like fire and especially tuberculosis, like your chance of surviving this disease can almost be directly tied into the amount of funding for your school. Because if you don't have much money, if kids are being housed together in like very close dorms and very close bunks, part of that Dr. Bryce report that Lance... Uh, was quoting earlier, he, and he probably hasn't read it, and we skimmed it on stream, but even in Dr. Bryce's report, he was saying these schools are breeding grounds for tuberculosis in ways that normal Canadian schools aren't. That's why there was like a 50 times higher or whatever mortality rate for indigenous children. So things like tuberculosis were actually within like the control of the Canadian government if they had had more funding for these schools. Lance probably doesn't know anything about this, so he won't give that counter, but that would be one way to counter what Connor is saying right now. In this world than my son, okay? So since the Canadian government took children and either accidentally, like accidentally or negligently killed them, they owe the families whose children were killed something. Where that's restorative justice, systemic change, you know, all that kind of bullshit. We can talk about that in the next the next segment. Yeah, sure. So it, it seems to me like it's just a point of disgust that you want to reach, right? So for you, it would be- He doesn't even know. He, has, he actually has no idea what he's doing in this conversation. How much longer does this go on for? How much longer do I have to suffer? Is this really going on for another hour? This is like unreal, dude. Egregious and beyond the pale if the children were taken out into the back of the woods and they were shot in the face. That to you is like, okay, that justifies me burning down a church apparently. Whereas I would say that in this condition and things that happened, when the statistics show one in five of the children was sexually molested, that to me is horrifying enough in and of itself to not even have to bring up the other things. Again, those things include experimentation. Those Wait, horrifying enough to what? Am I missing this or what? Is he making it sound like the, the church burnings are justified? I need to go back and listen to this again. I'm sorry. In the woods and they were shot in the face. That to you is like, okay, that justifies me burning down a church apparently. Whereas I would say that in this condition and things that happened, when the statistics show one in five of the children was sexually molested, that to me is horrifying enough in and of itself to not even have to bring up the other things. Again, those things include experimentation. Those things include torture. Those things include physical and sexual abuse, all of which to me are beyond the pale. So it doesn't matter to me whether or not we're going to quantify this in this kind of strange scale of eyeballs, right? Which is more horrifying. Are they shot in the face or are they all just sexually molested by priests? Either way, again, as wards of the state, the Canadian government, the Catholic Church were responsible for overseeing. I don't know if he knows this or not. I don't. Can somebody tell me where the association with the Catholic Church comes from? There were like four or five different um, denominations that ran these churches. Why is he only mentioning the Catholic ones? I don't know why he keeps verbalizing Catholic. It, it wasn't just the Catholic Church that ran. There were other denominations that ran these schools as well. Or actually, if I could ask, does anybody in a chat happen to have a link that breaks down like this is the number of churches or the number of residential schools ran by each type of church? Yeah, Presbyterians, Evangelicals, and there was one other one that was listed as well. That was also, funnily enough, I think, included in that Bryce report, the Dr. Bryce report. Seeing their safety. They failed horrifyingly at that. Okay, but descriptively, I know, Lauren, you want to go, but I'm very excited. So um, basically, descriptively, th this actually very closely parallels onto the BLM riots uh, of the previous year, okay? I can understand descriptively why riots are occurring. System, you know, systemic injustice, uh, you know, over-policing, the drug war, like all that kind of stuff. I can understand descriptively why these things are happening while not thinking that they're necessarily morally justifiable. So that's the that's the same parallel that I would exactly draw to this thing where I can understand that if your uncle or something like that was a part of the residential school system, he was sexually abused. And then a story comes out saying that there's mass graves in Catholic churches and there's a and there's a Catholic church up the block and you're either a leftist who's sympathizing with Native Americans or um, you're a Native American person yourself. Why you would commit vandalism? I understand that descriptively. But I also think that it's based on um, some shittily communicated information, and that doesn't make it morally just, which I'm very happy to explore in the next segment, because basically once we get into the details of the next segment, I think you're going to kind of see why the reaction to this stuff is also fucked up. Yeah, but see, I'm not here arguing in favor of people destroying churches. I'm, I'm not here arguing even if they were uh, the victims. Like, I got to understand why it's justifiable, but I'm not saying that that is a fair course of action to be taking. I'm not here to justify people destroying churches. I mean, if, if that's where we're going to move, that's fine. Uh, 
I, I would start by saying at this time, we do not know who is burning the churches down. I think okay. it's also I really throw, wait. I, I wanted yeah. to throw it over to Lauren because Lauren's been waiting a little bit. Then I'll throw it over to Tail afterwards. Yeah, that, that was going to be my next question for you, Lance, is whether you think these church burnings are justified because I made a video on the church burnings and you obviously responded with a, a long response where you claimed that my video condemning the church burnings was further victimizing the indigenous community because I was blaming them for it, something I never asserted once in my entire video. So, you know, it may have been easy to debate a straw man version of me, but now I'm actually here. Um, I actually think it's a lot of progressives doing it. And we can't say we don't know who are doing these burnings when people are literally signing off with activist messages or spray painting and graffiti and act messages. These are clearly progressive activists that have been inspired by the highly exaggerated talk of mass graves, which so, some of which, like ones found in Kelowna, um, in BC anyways, were just graveyards that were overgrown but called mass graves. So we know these are activists. We know they are being invigorated by false and exaggerated news. Do you condemn that? And do you condemn the church burnings and, and attacks in general? Yeah, okay, so, so I, that was a direct question to Lance. So I'm gonna let Lance respond, but then we I wanna go to tail. Okay, so first off, that was absolutely fascinating because you contradicted yourself mid-sentence. So that was something to behold. You just stated at the very beginning that like I'm not going to assert who's causing this. There's just no way of knowing. I wouldn't do that. Well, at the same time, mid-sentence That's not what she said. She said that she didn't insert, assert that indigenous people did it. Did I mishear that? Wait, I thought she said I didn't claim that indigenous people did it. Not that I couldn't possibly know who did it. Is he even listening to her? Lance, if you're listening, write down fucking notes on your notepad while you do these debates. You clearly, your mind, you just have no short-term memory. So fucking write shit down. And you're like, but we do know who is doing this because there are signs and activists committing these crimes and atrocities. Uh, still, no, no, even no, if I you have signs and even if you have revelations, hey, excuse me, I'm speaking, we're going to finish this. Even if you do have signs, even if you do say that, yes, at the end of the day, this must be Antifa or this must be an indigenous community who's doing it, we would still need to have direct evidence of that. We would still need to have individuals who are arrested. We would do you think, I wish I could try to think of common things. Do you think he would ever accept that same standard of evidence if some guy, if some white guy with like walked into to a mall and started shooting and killing like black people and Muslims, do you think he'd be like, well, hold on, whoa, 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 whoa. We don't know if this is a conservative. We need to wait. We need to wait a minute for more evidence to come out. Get fucking real, dude. Still need to have testimonies. We would still need- Like, it's crazy that like, we just, we just finally got to this point where everybody's calling this shit genocidal. Now all of a sudden we've got fucking 20, 30 churches burning down. Like, I, <laughs> could be anybody, you know? Who the fuck knows? LOL, who the fuck knows? To have a single, like, criminal conviction in this regard. And when it comes to these schools, or sorry, these Catholic churches burning down, yes, I do condemn them. I'm not here to defend people burning down religious institutions. That's not what I'm here to defend. Okay, I'm going to throw it over to Tail, and that was directed at Lauren, so we'll bring it back. What to fucking random-ass smug answer is Tail going to try to utter here without actually- Are we all okay? Had death We're like back. Tail, and that was directed at Lauren, so we'll bring it back to Lauren. Well, I do also find it interesting that we keep trying to move this definition of what was an acceptable level of death, like whether or not the fires at these residential schools can be attributable to some sort of nefarious intent. And my answer to that would be, well, maybe if they hadn't had the removal policy in the first place, then those kids wouldn't have died in those fires. I'm sorry, but uh, this kind of goes along with the article we read the other day. Like, there is some acceptable level of death. Like... I'm sorry, but death is never going to be zero, right? Even in, in the best systems in the world, I'm willing to bet that there are probably kids that die because, like, something breaks down or some roof collapses or some fire happens or some electrical outlet malfunctions. Like, I'm sure that this happens, like, all over the fucking world. Like, it just shit happens. It sucks, right? So there is going to be some level of death. Like, it, that's always going to happen, right? Um, like, we get it. Like, dying is bad. But, like... <sighs> But it is a curiosity to me that we do keep talking about these church fires. The church fires have been happening since long before the information came out about these kids. I mean, for, for example, in November 1st of 2020, there were two southwestern Ontario churches that were roughly 10 minutes apart. They were both set on fire. There was a series of arsons that were attributable to a man who was apparently arrested of over COVID violations just the week before the news was released. Uh, that was, uh, by the way, attributed by rebel news to cultural Marxists who were trying to rebel against mask regulations. So 
what is it we're talking about right now? I'm not in favor of church burnings. I think it's bad because it tends to destroy the records of these kids who were murdered and tortured. I, I think it's a bad idea overall, but I'm not seeing any evidence whatsoever that it somehow sprang fully formed from the forehead of Antifa five minutes after they found out that something was amiss at the residential schools. People have known what was going on at the residential schools for years. The Truth and Reconciliation Commission came out in 2016. So we've had plenty of time to process this information. Why are we suddenly worried about all of these church burnings? They've because I don't think the Truth and Reconciliation Commission is what's kicked off all the recent discourse. It was the, the discovery of the quote-unquote mass grave. It's been happening for quite a while now. Lauren, by the, by the way, I this man? wasn't a secret to indigenous communities. Like, this was one of the things where it was a revelation to Canadians. I, I, Lance, Lance, I, I said I yep. said that Lauren would be next. I can, I'll get it back over to you, but I want to be fair. Lauren? Yeah. Um, there, even the mainstream media, even if you go look at the most leftist sources, they're not denying that there is a link between these church burnings and the recent reports. Why? Because the media headlines, even the prime minister are talking about these mass graves, which the media are asserting and exaggerating are mass graves. And that's why this whole previous conversation was important. Of course, it's linked when you have 12 churches being attacked one night after a mass media storm about mass indigenous graves and the churches have writing on them that say in, save indigenous children. The idea that you could assert this has no link and that it's just random church burnings, I think is very, very silly. And Connor, I, I see you're putting your hand up there. I, I see uh, on hippy dippy, we usually have a hand raising role. So I think I've, I've kind of like done it like, like yeah, the we've, guy all been, did we've all been doing dogs, it. you know, Oh, yeah, sorry, so I know I'm not the mod. <laughs> Why is this stupid? F <laughs> He's trying to act so smart. <laughs> Why would you be on a show and say that all of us have been raising your hand to talk when your partner doesn't have a fucking camera on? Lance, what is wrong with you, Lance? You're losing it. Yeah. So it's like a, a what's a Pavlov? You know how Pavlov like made the dogs like twitch if he did a certain thing. It's kind of like that. So that's why he's raising his hand. We're gonna go to Lance first and then Connor, since uh, Lance was trying to speak earlier. Lance. Yeah, I'm just I'm just gonna quickly say that there has been numerous indigenous chiefs as well as band members who have come out and emphatically condemned the church burnings. They've also stated that these uh, churches were in integral parts of their community. So I think to lay blame on any one person, especially again before we understand who's done it, uh, historically it has all been proven to be a very dangerous practice. So. In the event that an individual in this case is arrested, in the event that we have a testimony, in the event that we find out that it happens to be the, the dreaded communists or Antifa, in which case, yes, I will acquiesce and gladly say, well, now we have a reason to, to state that this is the reason why this has occurred. Again, I'd like to say emphatically that this was not news to indigenous communities. This was not a new revelation. Uh, they have known for generations, the majority of the families of the children who had- Lauren didn't say it was indigenous people that were doing the crimes. You're attacking a straw man right now, like- Died in residential schools, were told by those schools that their children ran away. That was like, if you listen to the testimony of the people who have experienced this, in the vast majority of those cases, those kids, if they did run away, which sometimes they were just killed in the school themselves, they would have died on the journey. Many of them drowned, many of them froze. So it's not a case of all of a sudden this has opened up a secret. What this did do was this did reveal everything to Canadians. Polls came out afterwards that two thirds of Canadians had no idea about residential schools before any of this occurred. And yes, I think that is a good thing that they've learned about this entire horrifying part of our history. But that doesn't mean at that same time you can simply state that the blame of this was going to be laid on any one person. Okay. Okay, Connor. Thank you. And part of the reason why I keep raising my hands is because you keep ringing the fucking the dinner bell and you keep taking away my fucking dog bowl. All right. So, <laughs> goddamn. Um. So, okay. I I hate hate asking questions in debates because I I'm not trying to fucking got you. you. Uh oh. But if we were just trying to logically think about it as far as factional groups within the uh, within Canada, okay? We have the conservative Canadians. They're probably not doing it. I think that's safe to say, especially if they're Christian. We have, uh, you know, maybe we have Satanists. Maybe all the Satanists have gotten on like a Reddit forum and they're just like, fuck churches, all specifically right now. Fuck churches, right? Maybe that happened. Who fucking knows, right? Somebody go check 4chan. But... The fucking lines that I'm drawing here seem very straightforward. 
that upsetting news about the residential school system has been released and been the focus of media attention for at least the past couple of years. That's why we're talking about it right now, because it's relevant. The regardless of whether or not it's pissed off indigenous folk or people who sympathize them or sympathize with them is kind of a moot point. Moot. But I, I think here to be like, you have to find evidence that this is the prime motivator. Why? Who else would be doing it besides people who saw the news, got pissed off and decided they wanted to do something about it? I'm not talking about whether or not it's good or bad. I'm just saying, why are we trying to play hide the ball here about who's doing what and why? Uh, because I'm not stating that we have to find, like, ignore what the prime motivator would be. I, I'm sure you can make that assertion. I'm saying that we cannot claim or lay blame on any one group until we found out who exactly is doing it. You can you can state here's why I think what this is the reason why it is, but. I think it's been very dangerous if people are going to attribute to this, say, like, I've I've heard online uh, that a lot of people consider this to be indigenous activists, right? That they were bringing these churches out of anger and malice. I've heard a lot of people suggest that it may be, uh, as you both have, far leftist groups who are doing the exact same thing. You can You can attribute who you think the blame may lay at, but until we know who has done it, I don't think we can definitively say or claim in this debate here's who is the responsible party and here's why you have contributed or the leftists have contributed or the media has contributed. This is so unbelievable to me. Like, it's obvious. If you say somebody's genociding people over and over and over again and then people take up, like, arms and start arsoning buildings and shit, it's pretty fucking obvious what's going to happen. That's That should be a gimme. Like, come on. Contributed ...towards an atmosphere that resulted in these churches being burnt down. Sure. And actually, I want to address this head on because this kind of gets into um, justice, right? Um, so for me, the same way that you're asking that, like, hey, left wing groups, it could, there, it could be some individuals in the left wing groups that are doing this, but left wing groups in general probably aren't doing this as a policy. And as a matter of fact, there's people in left wing groups and indigenous circles that are actually discouraging these behaviors and they're not trying to encourage them. They're actually saying, this is fucked up. Please stop. It's the, the vast majority. Like, oh, the, yeah, the vast majority of bands and chiefs who've come out have spoken against it. Awesome. So when we move this conversation into justice, um, basically what I would assert is that this is where I would want to see justice meted out. So on a um, I don't want to say an individual level. But on a almost on an individual level. So, for instance, you were talking about priests that did the molestation. They should be investigated, prosecuted and uh, convicted. Right. Um, whether uh, maybe the church should consider paying restitution to people who are proven to be victims or some shit like that. OK, maybe maybe the government should do some do uh, try to address systemic issues in order to help people out. OK, uh, especially people who are specifically affected by these issues. I think that's all well and good. What we're trying to avoid here, actually very specifically through this conversation, or at least what my goal would be, is avoiding a cultural, ethnic, linguistic, and religious civil war in our liberal democracy. And the thing is, Canada's reckoning with this right now. America's not even fucking close to reckoning with any of this shit. Whether we're talking about Native American affairs, slavery, like any of that kind of shit, we're not even close to, to starting to describe to each other the actual historical wrongs that we have done to each other. So um, I, I want to get into this in a second, but I understand that you guys have asserted repeatedly that like um, there's an ongoing genocide. I would probably contend with that definition, but there's you can say that there's systemic issues or whatever. But I would see the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which we have stats on all the initiatives that they have started already. I would actually see that as the fucking gold standard of like transparency. Like it's actually incredible what they've done. Now, is it completely accurate? Maybe not. Does it is everything productive? Probably not. But as far as like actually going to the root of the problem, coming up with descriptors, coming up with policy and then trying to implement it, it's fucking amazing. Um, so I'm happy to get into that in a second. Yeah, uh, I'm actually just uh, genuinely surprised uh, with that response because we've just been throwing all these spicy shots. But like, I agree with most of what you said. And I think it's he, what Connor has been giving ground this whole debate. What do you mean you're surprised like actually a very constructive way of dealing with this problem at the end of the day what has upset me most especially with lauren's video is that i think this idea of suddenly talking about the moral outrage at the church burnings which i agree uh burning of religious institutions is something to be uh astounded at 
is trying to change the narrative from something that is an ongoing crisis in this country, which is the treatment of hundreds of thousands of indigenous people. And that is the thing that we should be talking about. That is the thing we should be concentrating on. And that is the thing we should be addressing. So I think that, yes, it is horrifying that churches are burning down, but I don't want anyone to lose the concentration that things like discovering of, uh, you know, b dead children, buried children, indigenous and residential schools. If this is where suddenly the uh, public conscience has come, and this is what we're talking about, then let's utilize this as an opportunity to start talking about the issues of cultural genocide that are occurring to indigenous people today. Um Okay, I'm gonna respond since you, yeah. you talked about my video. Lance, I, I watched your video and you actually liked the beginning of my video because I did not ignore the problems that happened in residential schools. I discussed them, you liked that aspect. Where you didn't like it was when I started talking about the church burnings. And these are not, these, these problems cannot just exist. You can talk about both problems. Why not? And we need to, because we actually have an injustice happening today that we can talk about and deal with and stop. And then the other ones, I mean, you say there's injustice happening today and the government are working on that. There, there are a lot of policies they've put in place for healing and maybe there are more we can discuss. But this, is, these church burnings are a problem happening right now. And I think it's really good that people are talking about them, especially when they bring in the conversation of the problems with residential schools as well. I cannot see what I have done wrong in discussing that. I also really want to point something out. Um, when it comes to the church burnings, you seem really interested in ensuring we have found the culprits and ensuring we have uh -oh. proper convictions. True. Yet when it comes to the Catholic Church, you were just saying we should be outing the names of people who have been accused, not convicted. So why does your you know, passion for justice and innocent until proven guilty exist for the church burnings, but not for the Catholic Church? Sure. So that's not what I said. What I said was that should they release the records of the individuals who were involved in these churches and whether or not those records you will said show. Accused. Uh, yeah, I said as in the, the records revolving around both the nuns and the priests who worked at those churches, those are records that the Catholic Church has not released. Whether or not those people turn out to be pedophiles is something that we can investigate and whether or not those people will turn out to be criminals is another thing that we can talk about. The reason why I don't enjoy your particular uh, brand of like pearl clutching when it comes to talking about these issues is that yes, you did a half decent job at acknowledging, which I was surprised to see, the residential school system and the treatment of indigenous people. When you twist things around, and then you take this as an opportunity to say, and now we need to talk about the real issue, which happens to be these Catholic churches that are bringing down, you are then trying to take away from the national conversation, which- Oh my God should be about the treatment of indigenous people. If I was to compare the treatment of Catholics in Canada to the treatment of indigenous Canadians, where do you think they would stack up? If I was to compare the treatment of the average white Catholic Canadian to the experience of the average indigenous Canadian, where do you think we would end up? Who needs more help and who needs more concern right now in terms of the way they're being systemically oppressed between those two classes? I wasn't comparing them. I was giving history and context as to why the outrage and conversation was happening in Canada and then discussing how two wrongs don't make a right. And that's the result like that. of what you do. Because when you set those terms up, when you put them in that context, when you make those kind of videos, when you just ask questions, that's what ends up happening. And whether you're doing it consciously, I'm not happening? sure. I, I don't know if you're doing it consciously or perhaps you're doing it unconsciously. I'm not sure. But that is the end result of your work. And when you make those kind what of is? videos. What is? When you, juxtapi when you juxtapose two things like that, two opposing ideas, you set them up on the same terms, you make videos- It literally one stems from the other. What the fuck is he talking about? How, dude, how much longer is this? I don't know how much. This is just, this is so stupid. This might be one of the most one-sided conversations I've watched like in a long time. Holy shit. Like, I, I don't even know what the fuck he's doing here. And then the other guy is just like completely and totally checked out because he's just like, fuck it, I don't have shit to say. Like about them and then suddenly it's going to be justifiable to think well the moral outrage should shift from this horrifying atrocity that has occurred and is still ongoing to indigenous canadians into so we should mentioned? now we should now talk about catholic churches and the burning of them down that that can is a problem with both? your particular I, brand I, of content. I, I think and i guess it's maybe just my audience. she should ask that question again can we not talk about both she should just focus on that can we not talk about both
audience, but my audience have the ability to juggle two ideas at the same time. I can explain past atrocities and then say, here's also a present atrocity happening, and they can say, wow, those are both bad things. Like, I don't know about your audience, but my audience can juggle two, two things at the same time without an and, issue. And it's with design, because by doing that, by pushing that narrative, they will be forced then to look at that and be like, well, you know what? I was a little bit upset about what was happening to indigenous people, but I should be a lot more upset now at the Catholic churches that are burning down because you've said so we shouldn't talk about the Catholic churches because it takes away from indigenous issues. You can talk about the Catholic churches. You should not juxtapose the two of them as if one is now going to be able to justify or accuse the other of being wrong. Imagine if she had made a video that only talked about the Catholic churches burning down. Like, imagine him would be like, it's funny that you'll mention all of this about the Catholic churches burning down, but you wouldn't even mention a single time why people are attacking them or what people are so upset about. Like, can you imagine the outrage she would have if she would have only made a video covering just the churches burning down? Like, this is such a disingenuous line of attack. That's not what I did, though. So how should I have made my video? Because what I did was I said, this is what happened at indigenous residential schools. This is why it was bad. Not a good thing. And then also there's this not a great thing happening today. And both things are bad. And we need to talk about it because it's happening right now. How should I have done that video differently? I feel like you're nitpicking and trying to find a problem with me because you didn't actually have an issue with that video, which is why you made up your issue in your response, which is that I was blaming natives, which I never did. Otherwise, you would have had an actual critique in your initial video. True. Well, I can answer that question quite easily. The information, I find it interesting that we've just glossed past the fact that these church burnings have actually been happening since long before the news was released. But in scouring yeah. through the information over the last, oh, probably two years, trying to find church burnings, causes, whether or not there were investigations performed, I found one that was particularly funny to me, which was, it was a church that has burned in the same spot three separate times over the last 50 years. And it turned out that it was the area where the priests keep the incense and the anointing oil. Because for some reason, I don't know why, this particular group of priests is just not aware that you probably shouldn't have an open flame next to flammable oil. Wait. He's actually, this is like tantamount to Holocaust denialism. R is that really what he's doing right now? Is he going to try to claim that like all of this is fake? That there aren't really any churches that are actually being burned down right now? I think the day after that first mass burial site, wasn't there like, there were literally like somebody linked in chat. There were like four that were burned down like that very first fucking day. Or, or like or within a week or whatever, I should say. There were like four Catholic churches burned down immediately. Like... When was the first ground penetration scan? Um, what was the what was the year? Or I'm sorry, no, what was the month for that? I, you would have to go through this list. I went through some of the arson or the vandalisms on this, and it seemed kind of shit. But like this, at the very least, has like a timeline on like June 26th, July 2nd, June 26th, June 26th, June 28th, June 28th, July 10th, July 3rd, July 4th, June 28th, June 30th. July 9th, July 1st, July 8th. Are you telling me, and I could be wrong. I totally could be wrong. Were churches burning this often in Canada prior to this? Is that, was this really that frequent in Canada? And so this is the fifth time that the fire department has been called out. So I would have liked to see you discuss, for example, why it is that Canadian churches seem to be exempt from fire codes or be aware that fire extinguishers have been invented. Oh my God. This guy is actual human garbage. He's actually human trash. Now, will Lance... I, I, I'm just asking this rhetorically because I know he's not going to. Will Lance have a backbone here and say, well, hold on. I don't know if I agree with my friend here literally denying the fact that any of these churches have actually burned down or is Lance just going to shut the fuck up? That's fascinating tale. So your current assertion is that all the fucking churches that burned down in Canada over the past two years was accidental and Catholic priests, on top of being fucking pedos and fucking Native American beaters, are fucking dog shit at fucking fire safety. That's what you want to contribute to this fucking conversation right now? I'm contributing to you the facts as they stand. If you have a problem with the facts as they stand, that's your problem. I have, the, I have problems with the fucking facts because you keep doing this meta conversation bullshit that has fucking nothing to do with what's going on. So, t so tell me, because I am frustrated with you. What the fuck did you just add to the conversation by saying that maybe Catholic priests are accidentally burning down their own churches? Is that a serious contention that Lord and I are supposed to take on earnestly? Do you think that we need to go back to fucking Google.com right now and be real quick and like be like, hey, uh, what's the fucking fire codes of the fucking Vatican? Do they put out fucking fire safety priests for the priests? Like, what the fuck am I supposed to research with that information? Are you asking me for tips? No, I'm not, because I know you're shitposting and you're being an asshole for no fucking reason. Contribute sure. to the fucking conversation or don't. I'm identifying Holy that shit. the church fires preceded any announcement of these graves. And mm -hmm. your assertion repeatedly is that there is some sort so, of... So hold the fuck up. So, so wait, if wait, I take wait, a look... Wait. Lauren should just read down that list, the one that I just linked. She should just read it down. The Wall Street Journal has a decent article on it. More Canadian churches burn in suspicious fire. Uh... <laughs> Police in Canada are investigating more than 15 fires that have damaged or destroyed churches in recent weeks. But in most cases, they have yet to name suspects or offer an official motive to the wave of suspected arson that has targeted wave. What do they mean by wave? No one has taken credit for the fires, but politicians and law enforcement officials have speculated that the churches are being targeted by those angry about the recent discovery of unmarked graves. 
The blazes destroyed four Roman Catholic churches and happened after an indigenous community said it found 215 unmarked graves near a former boarding school for indigenous children in British Columbia. Only a few weeks later, the Coessus First Nation in the Western Canadian province of Saskatchewan found 751 unmarked graves. Since then, more churches have burned in the provinces of British Columbia, Alberta, uh, Saskatchewan, Manitoba, Ontario, blah, blah, blah. no one cares about your fucking province. In addition to the fires, a series of churches were damaged overnight on June 30th by vandals who smeared red and orange paint over their facades and scrawled the numbers 215 and 751 on them. References to the numbers of graves found at two separate school sites. Like, Wait, what the fuck are you taking my ball? Connor, because I gotta let him at least finish if you want to respond. Connor's so finish. mad. I love him. I think, wait, what Connor, the fuck are you taking Connor, my ball? Connor, Connor, because I gotta let him at least finish if you want to respond to him. Okay. Tail, please finish. <laughs> I think I think Connor might need to take a break. But yeah, do you want to finish? Okay. okay. I do this all the time, buddy. I'm perfectly fine. I'm good. You may you may can proceed. What? It's obviously very important to you. Oh, it hey, is. Hey Connor, you can go on. See, thank you for the dog bowl, Dylan. Ding ding. So fucking. All right. So you said that these church burnings happened in the past as well. If I was to Google church burnings and look at it statistically, do you think I would see an increase over the past two years? I have absolutely no idea. And what the fuck are you I, talking I was, about? Oh my God, this guy is actually so unbelievably bad faith. Connor, if I can amen to you, I don't even blame you, dude. I, I truly don't blame you. Like, like he does a disservice to everything he wants to argue about up here. Like he is more damaging to indigenous people than any crazy far right fucking activist. Like the representation here is astoundingly fucking horrible. I cannot believe these two dipshits waddled into this debate with no facts, figures, understanding of anything being discussed and thought that they were equipped to have this conversation. Unbelievable, dude. I'm sorry. I feel like I said this 30 times. I would say probably. And uh, come on, mm, you, you, don't have to be, you don't have to be condescending in every single response you do to Tail. Come on. I mean, if, I if you don't. Oh, what do you mean? Tail's been condescending in every single response he's given to this entire debate. Are you fucking serious? Able to say something real. I did, Connor. I said something real. Okay, you said that Catholic priests are burning down their own churches by being assholes and putting incense in the wrong spot. That's what I heard. You is that your real contribution that, to this conversation? If you have a problem with that fact, it mm -hmm. is your problem to have. Okay, I'm I have a problem you. with that fact. Well, then that's your problem to have. Okay. Question. Are, are Catholic uh, priests also putting uh, paint on the front of their churches and beheading their statues? Paint that says, fight for, you know, X progressive cause. I've literally seen the serfs tweeting out stuff that says, you know, we were just indigenous children. Are the Catholic priests putting that up on, on their church walls? Are they the ones doing that graffiti? That's I'm been an exponential growth the last few months. I'm more than willing to acknowledge that there's plenty of things that have been happening over the last, oh, three or five or five or 10 years that could be charted in any number of conceivable ways. But you haven't actually addressed what I said. Which was, so these fires preceded the news. Okay, okay, here, let, let me break this down for you really quickly. I was a former law enforcement officer, okay? We investigate things. When something picks up in a certain pattern, let's say that there's like one burglary in one area, and then it's just one burglary and then it happens. Okay, well, burglary happens, we try to investigate it. If we don't figure it out, then okay, whatever. If 20 burglaries occur in the same area within a month, there's probably a reason for it, so you can investigate it. And what I'm doing right now is I'm doing one plus one equals two, and you're saying one is maybe a 0.5, so maybe it doesn't equal two. And I have no idea what this adds to the conversation because we're literally light years ahead I of where you're going. Say, this is not adding much to the conversation. Could, could we get back to the topic away from the fire uh, incense theory? Sure. Can I? Okay. I would like to ask a question from the service because basically sure. I'm sure he could educate us Wait. and then we could have some contention. Oh, Connor, yeah, okay. yes. I just okay. want to make one really explain like to me again, again, Lauren. Two second point, you like it, I promise. Um, you know what? I'm willing to concede that fires happen before all these fires that happen now. And no, you shouldn't. You shouldn't give a fucking centimeter of ground on that point. You shouldn't give anything to that. Like this is the equivalent. This this rabbit guy is basically making the equivalent argument to like a Holocaust. Come on, everybody did bad things in World War II. Like, he he's making the equivalent to that argument. Like, it is actually so absurd. Maybe it's just the fire's continuing. But assault and rape existed before the residential schools, so you know? You never know. All right, Connor, go ahead. Oh, no, I can, I can address that <laughs> again, yes. Uh, yeah, no, but again, uh, assault and rape can exist before the residential schools, but these were forced upon the children. That's a huge difference. It's again, almost again, like the context again, is different. Right, okay, go Yeah, on. and again, the same thing like counterpoints brought up, right? He said there's rape that exists everywhere in society. It does. If you were forcing children to be in these institutions where one in five of them was getting sexually assaulted, then that is on you. That is on the Catholic Church. That is on the government of Canada. Sure. Okay. So let's let's move the conversation forward because I would like to move forward instead of talking about incense burning. Um, so basically what you were talking about, one of the major contentions that we were going to bring up tonight was whether or not the current actions of the Canadian government or the actions since 1996 constituted genocide. I, I watched your uh, debate with Destiny. I liked it. I thought it was interesting. Oh, maybe, maybe it was a fan of yours. I'm sorry if, I, if I'm misattributing that to you. Uh, yeah, I was going to say I didn't debate but, Destiny. Yeah, it was, it was a fan of yours. Um, but the... The thing that I found most compelling was that like, I felt like a lot of the issues that were brought up while trying to um, support the term of genocide with evidence were paralleled 
in the American uh, system with with, uh, with black Americans, right? And so what, what I would say is from a progressive lens, most people wouldn't say that the United States government is trying to genocide black Americans. They would say that there's uh, systemic issues that disproportionately affect the black community, screw them over, over policing. I don't know if he got this point for me, but this is exactly what I would say, right? If, if we're going by the new Canadian version of genocide, literally everybody's committing genocide against all their minority populations right now. Like, we're on drugs, like all that kind of shit. But I, I think only a few people would use genocide. You seemed pretty confident in your assertion of the word genocide. So I would like to get your description and your evidence and maybe push back against it a little bit. Yeah, sure. Okay. So for the Articles of Genocide from the UN Convention, right? I, I'm pretty sure we all agree on Article E, forcibly transferring children from one group to another group. That's what the Canadian government has been involved with since the start of the residential schools. I mean, I believe that they kind of fall under most articles, causing serious or body or mental harm to members of the group, deliberately inflicting on the group conditions of life calculated to bring about its physical destruction in whole or part, imposing measures intended to prevent births within the group. Um, but the one that I'm sure we can all land upon and agree that Canada was committing was forcibly transferring children from one group to another group, right? Sure. But let, so let's say um, Lauren doesn't have to make this concession, but I'll make this concession. So let's say that there was a system to culturally genocide uh, Native Canadians, Native Americans um, in Canada. Up at, let, let's, let's just say that even if it was com considerably muted, it extended up until 1996. What about today? What Absolutely. about after 1996? Sure. Do you think constitutes genocide on behalf of the Canadian government? Sure. So what occurred independently of the residential school system in Canada was something known as the 60s scoop, which took place in about, the I believe, 1967 onward, in which 20,000 Indigenous children were taken from their families and they were actually carted into buses and they were sold uh, to families in both the UK and the US, which also would constitute child trafficking. Uh, they were sold in forms of- This is in the 60s, the 60s scoop. We we're looking for something a little more modern, but I'm sure we'll get there. We've got to run down our talking points. Terms for adoption, uh, they were sold and they were often placed within white families and once again lost their uh, indigenous culture, language, all that kind of stuff. Many of the 60 scoop children have grown up and they've come back to tell their stories. There's multiple survivors of this event and they've come forward to say that, yes, I was sold into adoption under the Canadian government. That is bad. But what is more important is that today we have a system in which the federal government of Canada, and this is really, really something that is important to keep in mind, they are the ones that oversee all public services on the reserves for First Nations children as well as First Nations education. That falls under the purview of the federal government. So they are the ones who have to fund the conditions necessary for child welfare. Now, if you want to take away all the history of the reservation system in Canada, and if you didn't know already, the reserve system in Canada, which was enshrined into Canadian law under the Indian Act, basically took and placed a whole bunch of indigenous cultures and put them into small spaces with deplorable living conditions, oftentimes far away from uh, places they were remote, they were away from Canadian society, they had a lot of difficulty, uh, you know, getting work and all that kind of stuff because of those conditions. But even if you want to erase all of that, and we take it forward to today, we live in a system now where we have an unbelievably high rate of Indigenous children in the foster care system. 50% of all the kids in the Canadian foster care system are Indigenous, uh, despite being about 3% of the Canadian population. In Alberta, it's 73%. In Manitoba, it's 85%. And in Saskatchewan, it's 87%. Now, just for comparison, Canada has 1.1% of children in foster care compared to a company like uh, sorry, country like Germany, which has 0.07%. Uh, now, two-thirds of all the girls in foster care uh, are abused, which is unfortunately deplorable. Um, children in the foster care system, uh, if they're indigenous, are four times more likely uh, to be sexually molested than if they're not. And it continues to permeate. 60% of homeless youth, one third of homeless adults were in the child care foster system. 91% of indigenous female prisoners report having been physically or sexually abused. Ha, okay, so I, well, I, understand what, uh, I don't know if I can finish this. This is actually just so fucking stupid. We have to prove genocide, not just like systemic injustice because of lack of funding. Is there an intentional part of the Canadian system to try to like abuse all these children? That's what you need to prove, right? Women make up now 38% of prisoners in Canada. The majority of them were in the foster care system. Uh, indigenous children make up 50% of all youth and correctional facilities. I could go on and on about all these, all the ways these things permeate, but the difference would be, and this is one of the most comparable things I would say to someone who wants to compare this to, say, the Black American experience, is that these reserve systems were set up by the government of Canada. These reserve systems were set up and enshrined by the government of Canada. And so they set up the conditions in which they would have to support and enable children in these conditions in order to be able to assure for their welfare. What ended up happening, and this is the, the, the reason why this is a huge problem, is they began to, sorry, began to underfund these systems. They have underfunded them by about 30% in comparing to their non-Indigenous counterparts. In the case of Ontario, they've underfunded them by about $400 million over the course of five years. So they are intentionally underfunding these systems that are- Intentionally, or it's like politically unpopular to fund them? What do you mean by intentionally? Then creating the poverty that is necessary for these kids to be justifiably taken from their parents in these systems. Okay, so ju just so I can understand it um, descriptively, so I can try to understand your argument, wrap my head around it. Um, so your argument is that, you know, we're only a generation away from the residential school system. Um, the systemic issues that are basically inherent in the res system, basically like lack of material resources, lack of education, infrastructure, all that kind of stuff. Lack of that drinking causes, water. Right, that causes broken families. Broken families are then contributing disproportionately to the uh, to the foster care system. And then the uh, foster care system is basically making it cyclical because they're producing fucked up adults that then in turn produce the cycle. Um, and then my question is, because basically I think a lot of these arguments, while still fucked up, um, are analogous to our own perception of our foster care system inside the United States. The, the the question that I have is, are you saying it's genocide because then it fits under that like UN subsection where it's the forcible removal of children and it's kind of like this multivariable... It doesn't fit under the UN subsection. That's why Canada themselves made their own 
own new definition because they wanted to remove that intentionality aspect out of it. But if you remove the intentionality part, then arguably almost any form of systemic injustice becomes a genocide, which is why it's so stupid to do that. Cycle that you're seeing, is that why you're calling it genocide or is there another reason? Okay, so uh, for me to make the assertion that this is still continuously ongoing cultural genocide, I would have to use the reference, again, that we've been speaking about the Truth and Reconciliation Commission multiple times. Uh, there's also the Murdered and Missing Indigenous Women report that came out that asserted the exact same thing, as well as the UN Human Rights Council that said that this is an ongoing uh, crisis that tantamounts to genocide. Amnesty International has come out and declared the same uh, terms uh, in no uncertain words. It's not simply that they are intentionally, because they are intentionally underfunding these programs that is then uh, creating this revolving door system. They are also uh, specifically uh, adopting Indigenous children at a higher rate, despite the numbers. So if I am to compare Indigenous children to non-Indigenous children and the rates and the reasons why they are abducted uh, for the adoption program. If you were to look at every single metric, non-Indigenous parents commit other atrocities such as physical abuse at a much higher rate than non-Indigenous parents. So for uh, non-Indigenous parents, physical abuse occurs at 23% of the cases in which the kids are taken. In Indigenous families, it's only 9%. The same thing occurs for sexual abuse, emotional maltreatment, exposure to intimate partner violence. All of those across the board are either equal to or higher than with non-Indigenous families. The exception to the rule and the only reason why Indigenous kids are apparently uh, taken from their families at a much higher rate is neglect. And neglect only registers at 16 points higher than non-Indigenous kids. So one of the biggest problems we have here is neglect as a broad term for being able to take these children away from their families is typically for a handful of reasons related to their living conditions. Their living conditions, which again are under the purview, uh, especially when it comes to child welfare, of the federal government of Canada, who is intentionally, intentionally uh, paying them much lower rates than they are other families. They are creating the conditions in which this is occurring. Now, this, by the way, is not in and of itself. I, I wouldn't just walk away from this and be like, genocide, mic drop, you know, and then I've, I've fucking done it. This is again one of many things that would be characterized in, say, if we were to look at uh, uh, the Truth and Reconciliation Report or uh, any of the number of other reports that have come out, even the Royal Commission that came out in 1996. This is one of the biggest critical factors. If you look at the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, which has stated that this is a genocide and that it is ongoing, they set out a whole bunch of calls to action specifically to address the fact that this is something that is ongoing and we need to stop this. And like you said, it was groundbreaking. I completely agree. I mean, it, it started in 2008 only because of a lawsuit cost $100 million, but their findings are critical. And the top numbers, if you read all the calls to action in the Truth and Reconciliation Commission, the top numbers all talk about child welfare. Sorry, child welfare. They're the most important things to them because they are the ones that are critical for this ongoing process. Um, do you mind if I jump in? All right. Uh oh. <laughs> Is this going to be about all the work that's been going on on all of the recommendations? Yep. So you, you were just mentioning, and I really have to look at the data, that within Indigenous families, at least in adoption, that the rates of abuse are lower, correct? Uh, it depends on which categories. But for Which nearly, categories? so for nearly every single category, for non uh, non Aboriginal children, for physical abuse, it's higher. Uh, for sexual abuse, it's higher. Uh, for emotional maltreatment, it's the same. And for exposure to intimate partner violence, it's higher. All for non Aboriginal families. The only case in which First Nations mm -hmm. children are um, higher is neglect. Okay. So first of all, I want to agree with you that the foster system is deeply messed up. You know, I've, I've had family that have experienced it even just as non-Indigenous and almost died in it, right? It's, it's a messed up system. It needs help in all regards. And if there is underfunding for Indigenous children in the system, that's something I absolutely support fixing. Um, now, is there a disparity, and you may have the data on this, is there a disparity uh, in the amount of Indigenous kids versus non-Indigenous kids that are removed from their homes in the first place? Yeah, it's overwhelmingly Indigenous yeah. kids. Over, and so, like, if I read the CBC or I go online, you can see, and I mean, you can disagree with this if you want, they'll talk about how there's higher drug use in these communities, higher uh, incest and rape, um, you know, neglect, these things in general. And I, this is not talking about just the foster care families, this is talking about the general population. And they say that it is because of the legacy of the residential school and things that they were taught while they were there, perhaps. But wouldn't it follow um, that if these things are happening in the community, that that is why more kids are being put in the foster system? And I, I just, like, does that follow to you? Yeah, so what you're trying to do is lay blame directly on, I guess, parents for the drug use. No, no, no I'm not trying to lay blame. I'm just trying to sort out why, why this is happening so that we can have a conversation. Yeah, absolutely. You're just asking questions. And in this case, it would be... <laughs> he tries to meme so hard. Oh my God, dude. The overwhelming reason why they are being taken from the families, again, falls under neglect. No, neglect can include uh, parents who are using drugs. Neglect can include that. Uh, there's a number of reasons why they're taken from their families. Um, in terms of the conditions on these reserves, and in terms of the conditions as to why they are... like, You have to understand these are deplorable environments. And yes, uh, a lot of these people came back from the residential school system, and this has permeated the cycle of abuse. But these are also areas, there's 54 reserves, and this falls, again, under the government of Canada, that don't have drinking water. They don't have potable drinking water. Like, the very essence of life, and I'm not trying to become emotional or anything here and try to appeal to emotion, but I'm saying that that is a critical aspect of living in these environments. And that is why this may perpetuate and create conditions in which you will find families who are broken. In addition to, many of these families have also been given ultimatums in which if you wish to receive treatment, if you wish to receive any kind of, let's just say, compensation, if you wish to receive uh, financial aid, you may have to put up your children for adoption in order to receive that money. That was something else that came out of the commission. So, I, I don't know how else to, to explain this other than a lot of this does fall under, like, 
you, you can chalk up a handful of this of personal responsibility, and I'm not going to try and absolve anyone from personal responsibility. That's not my purpose here. I'm trying to say how much is the government of Canada themselves accountable in this equation. And if the government of Canada and things like, again, clean drinking water is responsible on the behalf of the government of Canada, it was a promise made by Justin Trudeau. He said he would uh, fix that, and we still have 54 different uh, reserves that don't even have clean drinking water. Then that falls under them. If they're intentionally withdrawing or withholding or suing families in order to withhold the money that is owed to them to help their child welfare, that is on the government of Canada. I'm sorry, counterpoints. Yeah, counterpoints you are. You can go. Yeah, so this is actually where, um, listen, I'm not, I'm not like the other girls, okay? I'm an enlightened centrist. Um, so this is where I, I seriously think that the, the right and left could come together. Um, and I, I hate to say that, but I'm going to, even though this is a debate. So when you're, ta when you're talking about uh, conservative values, conservative Christian values, I know that makes uh, some people catch on fire and cringe to death and all that kind of stuff. Um, oftentimes, one of the primary things that's emphasized is strong families. Um, strong families come from a strong environment. So if you literally, like at least for me, if I was arguing with conservatives, I would say, listen, you're born through no fault of your own. Your parents are addicted to drugs. You don't have access to good food, good water, good education, good anything. Um, and then basically up to you to bootstrap. Now, can you bootstrap? Sure. Everybody, you know, some people are fucking Ben Carson, right? They can become a neurosurgeon despite thinking that like uh, grain was stored in the fucking pyramids or some shit like that, right? Some people can bootstrap, um, but some people can't. And then on top of that, uh, shady conditions basically decreases your ability to bootstrap. So for me, what I would say is there's variables that we can control. There's variables that we can't, and we have to control the variables that we can't. But what I would want, um, because basically what maybe genocide um, for me is too strong of a term, maybe that grants some immediacy to the issue that allows it to be addressed politically. But at the same time, like I see this shit not as a single generational project. I see this as like a century long project, literally. And by that, I mean making schools that aren't dog shit, you know, early education, um, and then basically raising productive productive adults. Now, my definition of productive is probably way different than anybody on the left, but at the same time, like that's where I think there's a real opportunity here. Um, the, the reason why I think I came into this conversation pretty strong and I was like, fuck yeah, let me do this conversation, um, is because when I hear that we have like fucked up systems, not enough water, not enough food, not good education, I don't think genocide. Now, whether or not we can move past that shit and just start focusing on solutions instead of calling each other assholes, I don't know. Like calling each other assholes on Twitch.tv is fucking fun. I love it. Um, but at the same time, like, I don't know, strong families, strong families make strong children, strong children make strong families. Um, a question. Oh, sorry, uh, Dylan. Quick, yeah, but I do want to say we are we are speeding towards the end. We have about five minutes left until uh, where God. the conversation was listed to end. So <laughs> I, I just wanted to ask the room if you wanted to end it here or if you wanted to keep it going. I could go for maybe another 10 minutes max. <laughs> Fair uh, yeah, I need to wrap up soon too. If okay, so if I could just add two things, I just I, I guess I, well, I spent too much time can talking. Do it, can we do it in closing, or do you think we can? Um, would that be difficult? Or um, sure. Well, our closing. I can, I can, I'll, give, okay, I'll give it. I'll give it about five. I'll give five about, minutes left. Uh, since Okay. All right. Uh, have you go and have Lauren go. Lauren, you were going to go first. So, so Lauren then serves. Sound good? Okay. Yeah, good. okay. Um, yeah. I first wanted to mention, I do not think a lack of clean drinking water leads to parents having sex with their kids. And that is a larger problem that we're going to have to address. That can't be addressed just, okay, give people money, fix the infrastructure in a town, right? Um, yeah, we can all agree that fi fixing the infrastructure is good, but this also brings up a whole giant, opens a can of worms of there are people in the indigenous community in Canada who don't even want to be a part of the laws of Canada, who feel that's an aspect of cultural genocide, who feel that the government having any sort of decisions on their land is a part of cultural genocide. So then to balance this issue with, okay, you also need to build the infrastructure here. You also need to ensure the conditions are good on our land, but also we don't want to be a part of Canada. That creates a really difficult contention and problem. And they don't want to pay taxes either. When we're dealing with here. And of course, we're not gonna have time for it in that, this debate here, but I do think that that is something that should be considered. Lance? So I just want to quickly say, uh, counterpoints, if, if you have more interest in this, because um, I, I think you do have productive interest in this topic, I would recommend also checking out uh, the inquiry into the murder of Mr. <laughs> He's so fast and aggressive. I'm missing indigenous women, which speaks pretty highly also to the eugenics program that was instilled in Canada and forced sterilization that is still occurring to indigenous Eugenics and forced sterilization is the same thing as the inability or the unwillingness or whatever to investigate the indigenous women's murders. Nice women today. As recently as 2018, uh, nearly 100 women, I believe, in Saskatchewan, or no, 100 women over the last decade, but I think 18 women in Saskatchewan have begun lawsuits against the provincial government's healthcare program for experiencing forced sterilization. Um, there has been numerous cases across this country of this occurring, and specifically occurring in much higher rates to Indigenous women, uh, typically under the guise of them not being mentally sound or mentally fit, and uh, often under duress in that they cannot receive their own children after being born unless they sign away the rights to be forcibly sterilized. So that's one of the aspects of it that will be present, obviously, in the Murdering Missing Indigenous Women uh, document. There's a number of other reasons, though. I mean, I'm just, I, I didn't have the time to get into it now, but the conditions that are being set up in these uh, in these reserves that are being perpetuated. The fact that the government of Canada did not uh, even want to give money in return to these reserves because they were dramatically underfunding it until a like, class action lawsuit was taken up by Cindy Blackstock, which ended up rewarding, uh, I believe, close to like $2 billion, which the government of Canada is still fighting in court to try and withdraw them from having. This is like, there's so many things that once you stack them upon each other, it's the reason why it's not just myself. You know, this is again, something that has been recognized by Amnesty International, the UN Human Rights Panel. And uh, again, one of the last things I'll say on this, especially uh, regarding the forced sterilization of women, um, the International Conference of the United Nations Human Rights Commission held in Montreal State in March 1999, that Canada is in violation of international law and its treatment of Aboriginal people, and that the condition of natives is the most pressing human right issue to Canadians. It is tantamount to their genocide. So, 
Okay. So Again, now go into that was like 25 years ago, though, but okay. Go into closing statements and shout outs. Please do shout yourself out in your closing statements. Uh, thank you all for attending tonight's conversation. I appreciate uh, your, your well being. Uh, sorry for all my viewers on my side about the stream crashing. Uh, you know, things happen. It was probably the Canadian CIA. You know how it works. Uh, it's CSIS. Go over to, uh, is that what it's called? CSIS? It's called CSIS. Everything's leaving wow. Canada. <laughs> well, including the debates. Now we're going to throw it over to Connor. <laughs> Yeah, my name is Connor. I run a YouTube channel named Counterpoints. I'm a center center right, a law enforcement veteran, Marine Corps veteran, science fiction, religion, and philosophy nerd. Um, I do like debates like this. Sorry to uh, Tale of uh, Twin Rabbit for being a dick, but sorry you frustrated me a little bit. Um, and then basically, I, I know everybody was expecting a fucking bloodbath, and maybe we failed that a little bit, but that's because, like, I don't know, I give a shit. We're talking about people who are being, like, ultimately at the end of the day, regardless of whether or not we call it genocide, um, we're talking about people who were, uh, were raped and murdered. Um, we were talking about kids who ran away from their homes and died of exposure. All this shit is fucked up. Um, so we can talk about the, the reason why I wanted to enforce descriptive reality is because I've said this before. I'll say this again um, is some of the way this stuff is portrayed. I would be probably acting not in the most rational way possible. The reason why I want to nail down descriptive reality of the past. The reason why I want to nail down descriptive reality of the present um, is because I think accurate descriptive reality can get you to better prescriptive solutions. Um, so maybe we can talk about that another time. I sincerely appreciate y'all and I wish you all well. OK, I'm going to throw it over to Lauren Southern. Yeah, for sure. Thank you for having me. First of all, Dylan, I know it's a bit controversial. Um, so firstly, to assert that there is a genocide occurring, to assert that there were mass graves found out of all of the graves that were allegedly found that have been in the media the last few months, not a single body has been exhumed, not one. And even so, this doesn't mean there aren't necessarily graves or a graveyard, but all of the chiefs in these communities have stated these are not mass graves if they do exist and they do know about them. The 751 graves found, the Cowessos Band, Chief Cadmus Del Delorme emphasized that the findings were not from a mass grave, but unmarked graves. The band leader in Kelowna said it was not a mass grave for the 215 graves found there or potentially. The GPR researchers that did this research said nothing is confirmed until things are dug up. Yet progressive activists and media continue to make the claim of mass graves and so do our debate opponents, exaggerating what were some potentially absolutely horrific things that happened in the past. And we need to be honest about what has occurred to have a proper conversation while not exaggerating. And unfortunately, this exaggeration has led to legitimate hate crimes and destruction today. And that is unfortunate and especially unfortunate that people are making excuses for it. OK, now I'm going to throw it over to Tale of Two Rabbits. Thank you very much. I'm, I don't know. I'm unclear. Academics, historians, indigenous nations, government agencies, they've been open about this genocide for decades. The Truth and Reconciliation Report was issued six years ago. The concession was made that these fires aren't somehow all a conspiracy of Antifa. The concession was made that the mass graves are being identified and require- I can't believe that anybody, even Lance's audience, can't think that this guy had a good performance. There's no fucking way, right? For the research. The concede was made that the foster care system is absolutely toxic and therefore the removal policy was unacceptable. And in response, I got rhetorical tactics and a fair amount of shouting because this was fun. Fairly mature people learn from their mistakes and move forward. Fully mature people own up to their past. Fully mature people acknowledge that sometimes a priest can accidentally set fire to his own church rather than scream at the person who says that it happened. When members of my community learned that I'd agreed to participate in this, they were appalled. I hope they at now least kind of partially understand why I did. <laughs> okay. Before we throw it over to Lance to wrap oh it up, my God. I just want to let everybody know that tomorrow we have the Hippie Dippy Roundtable on my show for this Friday. And uh, next week I uh, had to reschedule due to today's uh, technical difficulties uh, my review and then of Tariq Nasheed's new movie, Buck Breaking, with uh, Your Movie Sucks, which should be happening hopefully some point next week. Now we're going to throw it over to Lance to wrap it up. Yeah, I don't think there could be any restorative justice as long as the people responsible aren't taking claims for the actions they've done. Um, if I could use uh, a simile, uh, it's kind of like uh, you, Lauren Southern, because ultimately, if you had spent your career rising to become one of the darling children of the alt-right, palling yeah. around with people like Brittany Pettibone, Richard Spencer, uh, touring around the globe with someone like, let's say, Stefan Molyneux, who is well known for measuring the skulls of black and white people, uh, spreading the great replacement conspiracy, spreading the great genocide conspiracy theory, then going on tour, spreading both of those conspiracy theories, in addition to going to Gen join uh, that far-right nationalist group, uh, first Europa, and then joining them by shooting flares at immigrants, and doing all of this while well, at the same time uh all of it bubbles over and boils over to the i like it doesn't even get the facts wrong like there was some genuinely dumb shit that she was involved in and horrific shit shooting flares at immigrants <laughs> point where at the end of the day you ultimately 
uh, led to one of the people contributing towards the Christchurch shooting, who declared that the Great Replacement Theory was one of the reasons why they committed the atrocity that they did. Afterwards, you then took you everything back. You fucking pussy. You Afterwards, fucking pussy. You Bringing this back. all up at the end so I don't have I, a chance to respond. I, you can I, respond. Wait, 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 wait. I'm, I'm more than glad. More, more than glad. Uh, more than glad. I would love. I would love. Please. Bring Why up. would you invite additional conversation when you already fucked this one up so hard? Wait, wait, wait. Bring wait, wait. It all can I just say, can I, wait, wait. You can respond, but yeah. let me just yes. be clear. I am not going to be part of it. If you want to make this into a fucking shit show, I'm leaving and I will not contribute to that because that's not my. That's not the type of brand I want to produce. Do you both understand that? Okay. Lance, finish, and then I'm out and you two can fucking eat each other alive if you want. Sounds good. Lance, okay. Lance, you going to finish? Yeah, yeah. It I'll... sounds like this is the most research that he's done for this entire debate. Oh, I'll finish. <laughs> and then turning the whole thing around to suddenly say that you're going to rebrand yourself as this wonderful new centrist and everything's wonderful and that you write children's books now and it's all uwu and everything's good now and nothing bad ever happened. I think if you wanted to achieve restored injustice when it came all of this stuff, then what you had to do was simply acknowledge any of the bad things you've done in the past, but you haven't. So I don't think the idea of you now doing this rebranding tour uh, is anything more than you just seeing the writing on the wall. That's ultimately what this all is. You knew what was happening to your peers, and uh, you were smart enough and astute enough to to walk away from it. You're such a bitch, Lance. Okay, bring it up. Well, Let's go. Um, Let's go. Talk to me. I'm I'm staying right here. I'm not going anywhere. Oh yeah, throw seven thousand accusations at me and then ask me to respond to them. That's great. Connor and I are gonna have a chat with my chat. And if you want to not be a bitch boy and have a full conversation another time, we can do that. We'll arrange that. Okay. Uh, you all have a pleasant afternoon. <laughs> I'm right here, Lauren. You don't have to go anywhere. You don't have to go talk to Connor. I Bye. have to go join my family and my life. But I'm seriously. Let's set this up for another time. Let's set this Sounds up for good. another time. Oh my God, let me moderate that debate, please. I'm 100% for it. All right, <laughs> see good. you later, bitch boy. Have fun. <laughs> oh, hey, everybody. It's me. It's Lance. It's your friendly, your friendly neighborhood Lance. <laughs> <laughs> oh, well, I'm excited for that. That'll be wonderful. That'll be wonderful. Well, no, I want, I want to keep everything about the facts. I want, to, I want to stick to the facts and the feelings, you know, not, not talk about that. Um, yeah, we'll see, we'll see how it goes. I don't know if I'll have another opportunity to send you that stuff to Lauren's face, so. Hey, to Riz 100, thank you for the 10 gifted subs. I appreciate you. It's good to see you. Uh, how dare you bring up things that I've absolutely done. You didn't need to put your down the stairs at the end. Please tell me there's going to be a Twitter clamp. How's You're it going, debate, really, like, I'm not a debate, bro. Clearly, everyone was so worried. Um, everyone was so worried. Fantastic. That, this Fuck actually it, might be one of the worst performances I've ever seen from Lance in my entire life. And that's saying something. Because he has said some astoundingly stupid shit to me. I liked how you were like begging them in the middle to please talk more because you realized that they were getting so absolutely fucking shit stomped. <laughs> that so, like what, one of the preconditions of me doing this, uh -huh. uh, because it was either going to be me or, or M modern day debates, apparently, mm -hmm. I was like, well... Well, if we're gonna have this, might as well be strictly moderated. Mm -hmm. So we had a uh, we had a person in the background timekeeping. Mm -hmm. For so like I every once in a while I'd get like an update of like how much each person talked, and at one point I looked and Lauren Southern talked for double the amount of time mm -hmm. of both like Lance and uh, what's uh, and, um, Lance the and the other, rabbit dipshit it, fuckhead. It, well, okay, I will say the Avatar person, person <laughs> with the Avatar. Okay, and. I was like, well, if she alone has spoke double, and that it's not even including Connor, then I need to do my best to like... Yeah, but the issue more. was that it wasn't because they didn't have enough space to talk, it was because they didn't have anything to say. Yeah. That rabbit like, guy actually, shut the fuck up the entire want, conversation. Is he an indigenous I, person? Uh, I believe so. Oof, he's gonna get harassed tonight. Yeah, Jesus, what a um, horrible believe, fucking showing. I believe, yeah, they're getting pretty... They're getting pretty railed online. Yeah, right they now. deserve they it lock. hard. They super deserve it. Like I don't think they deserve everything. Absolutely, they deserve. No, it. This is probably no, one of the no, worst no, no, showings no, no, in no, these no, conversations. No. Hey, wait, wait, if you're going to take on, first of all, actually, I will push back so fucking hard against you. Okay, if I'm going to get called an irresponsible platformer every fucking time I have any fucking conversation with any of these people, if you're going to market yourself as the fucking indigenous man's mascot and giggle and talk about how you play video games and do all this fucking indigenous culture, and you talk for ten fucking minutes, even after being begged by the host, and even after being tagged in by your debate partner 30 fucking times and you don't have shit to say except uh i didn't follow any of the fuck conversation nah fuck you you deserve everything coming your way in terms of like online fucking like ridicule absolutely sorry go ahead okay, well. 
I was just saying, I've seen a few things that are a little over the line about like game ending stuff, right? It's like, okay, that's not stuff anybody deserves. Like the guy literally denied the fire. He's like, oh, well, wasn't it just incense? Like, come on. Okay, but can I just get you to say that you don't believe he should end his own life then? I mean, just to be clear, he's getting a lot of I didn't stuff. say he should end his own life, Jesus. Okay, then let's be clear. Yeah, there's a TOS over about. here. I wouldn't say that. Okay, wonderful. But, I mean, if, if you want my honest opinion, right? My honest opinion, and I'm not so, probably shouldn't, like, yeah, they didn't perform great. I'm, the pre it's not that they didn't perform great. They just, they didn't know anything about what they were going to talk about. How not? They didn't know anything about the first grave site found. They didn't know anything about the ground penetrating scanner technology. They didn't know what the def... I'm sorry, Dylan. You're a history guy. I'm not, okay? You know what the uh -huh. fuck a mass grave is, right? You know that a mass a grave mass, doesn't just mean a lot of bodies point. in an area, right? Like, what? As as I'm usually referred to when I think of mass graves, is usually un, uh, an unmarked site of some sort where mm -hmm. a bunch of bodies were dumped into a pit to yeah. dispose of them quickly exactly. after like, a war crime. Usually. Yep, oftentimes to to not disclose what's happened. Yeah, you can't just say a lot of people were buried here. That's a mass grave. When that rabbit dipshit poked up and he's like, "Well, mass just means a lot." Oh, come the fuck on! Is every single cemetery a mass grave, my dude? Well, I, I think the thing is, um, the mass grave discussion felt very pointless because somebody could have easily been like. Why should a school have a grave, period? The fact that there were so many people dying at these schools shows terrible misjustice. I felt like if like that angle was like ridden with, it would have just played much better. Well, the reason was because they were ran by churches, so they had like cemeteries outside. Like that's why, right? It was all like grounds of like church, school, like and then yeah, cemetery. But, but graves specifically with a large amount of child bodies due to like children like running away from well, abuse. Sure, but I mean like stuff. I'm not, yeah, I'm not gonna, like, defend what happened at these schools, because obviously there were atrocities, but I mean, like, also, let's think, like, past the, the initial atrocity, you have a bunch of kids dying of tuberculosis, are you gonna ship those bodies back to, like, indigenous communities? Like, is tuberculosis something that could be spread past death, like, um, malaria or whatever? Is that, like, a concern? No, but that would be, the, the problem isn't the existence of the grave, period, the problem is that the grave was necessary because of the treatment, uh, how these people were treated. Sure, I, and I can agree with that, but I'm just saying that when you say, ma oh, not malaria, I'm sorry, Ebola is what I was thinking of. When you say mass grave, you know what you're doing, not you in particular, but, like, when you say mass grave, the connotation is you are killing large swaths of people and probably trying to hide that fact and you're killing so many of them and you don't give a fuck who they are you just toss them all in a pit so like cemetery where children are born because a lot of them are dying due to like really bad housing conditions well, and mean, shit like that's bad but it's somebody, not a couldn't mass somebody make the, couldn't somebody make the argument that due to the large amount of neglect that was shown towards these children that mm -hmm. the intent of like using the word mass grave and I, may, I'm, I would admit that mass grave might not be the best word to use here I would say that the intent of using that word would be to display the amount of neglect and like harm like directed towards these children yeah, but this is the, the problem this is the problem that i always have with leftists then stop lying about fact one when you've got fact two three and four that are really bad there was a lot of really horrible conditions set up in these schools tons more children per capita were dying in these schools from tuberculosis mm -hmm. and shit that's what the argument should be about don't try to make it about some intentional genocide intentional mass grave like why would you go there because when you lose on that ground descriptively like rhetorically you already look like you've made up everything else you're going to talk about like just start on the strong point like yo lots of kids died here it was horrible I will say the thing the thing that baffled me the most um, um, there, there's there's a few things that baffled me but one big thing that baffled me was like the talking about the the church burnings oh like my god like the incense <laughs> the incense thing that, that that really confused me because it I it just felt like a waste of it wasn't a waste. He was yeah. trying to make it sound like there were no church burnings going on, but it was all—it was just a few accidents, and they've always been going on. It basically, it was like his version of Holocaust denial. Like that dude was two YouTubers away from being a fucking Nazi, Garen fucking Teed, one hundred percent. While I wouldn't, while I wouldn't agree with the terminology you use exactly, I do agree that the point of it was to basically downplay what was going on and say so like, "Hey, we don't know what's really going on." Mm -hmm. the, the, I think the line that the source ran with better later with a lot better which was basically like we don't know exactly who did it it could have been this it could have been that it could have been this which i think was better than just like being like well how do we yeah do a little like but i remember when i was first arguing this with lance fucking mm -hmm. like i think i think this was maybe even back in june i don't know if they're gonna look but like i remember that my initial argument was like bro the reason why i don't like this idea of it being an ongoing genocide is because when you say that the response should be people rising up and fighting the government. Like if there's an ongoing genocide, that is a demand for action if you live in a just society. So like, 
when ch churches and shit are burning down, when you say like, uh, you know, genocide, 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 like, yeah, I mean, like, that's kind of understandable. So for people to act like, oh, we don't know why churches are burning down when you're using these like ultra charged words, right? Genocide is arguably, besides what, Holocaust? Genocide is like the worst word you can use, like the most aggressive word you can use. And to say that one is actively ongoing, like Jesus. I would say the thing that got me about this debate was the amount of topics that needed to be covered. Number one, it was the churches. Then it was also whether or not it classified as genocide historically. Then it was, a, then it later went into whether it's still genocide. Then there was a topic about retributive justice, which meant for everybody involved at any point, someone could be like, and I didn't set up the debate. I wouldn't have set it up specifically like that. It would have made it like about one specific topic. Mm -hmm. This was given to me about two days ago. So I, I, what happened, like if somebody was talking about, say like the ground radar technology at some point, someone could be like, well, let's talk about retributive justice. And then you talk about retributive justice and somebody would be like, well, let's talk about whether this is genocide. Mm -hmm. And so that you get to pivot, 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 pivot the whole conversation. Mm -hmm. And so it feels like if I was trying to timestamp, this it's going to look like a fucking mess and that's not good. Yeah. Well, I mean, like the difficulty is that when you talk about retributive justice, you're talking about retribution for a wrong act. We kind of have to agree on what the wrong act was in order to get into the justice part, right? Yeah. So like it makes it, sense that that conversation is going to precede anything about like retributive justice. Yeah. The thing is when the questions were sent to me and this is um this is something like for example, I really don't I don't I know you've been on primes before. I don't really like how like like for example, prime like phrases questions when you're in the Discord groups, which is like a very long like almost paragraph for each question like considering the fact that this happened at this is when it should just be is welfare good or bad sure like it should just be you that didn't, simple the and problem wasn't like, with you it, in this the, debate like your topics well, yeah, i know fine. the problem is mm -hmm. I, well, the problem for me with the topics was there's so many strung together and no. i was basically no was, wrong your topics were absolutely fine your issue well, was that half of your panel could not engage on a single fucking topic that was the problem the problem is that every time lauren or connor brought something up lance would dance around 15 things because he didn't know how to address any of the points they brought up and that rabbit dude was sitting there i guess supposedly masturbating the entire fucking time maybe to the artwork on one of the games that he bragged about playing he should have spent more time reading the text and less time jerking off to the pixels well, on the, the problem screen. is wait wait i i don't I don't even think you disagree with me because early on, for example, there was this conversation about retributive dust justice and then it got to something else. And then somebody else like thought of like, I thought this was about retributive justice. Then it went back to retributive justice. It was like, okay, then talk about retributive justice. And so that it was able to shift around that way. And I don't like giving people too many opportunities to generally pivot by having multiple topics, being able to be talked about at the same time. If we're going to do multiple topics, then I feel like there should have been four separate sections of the debate. Where we talk about each topic and build upon it. Like at first you would talk about, about okay is it a genocide then you build upon that saying okay now let's talk about retributive justice because once you've come to a kind of conclusion of that you've built like on your premise yeah of course but again the problem is like so like what are mass graves we couldn't even get agreement on that that i still don't think that lance or the other guy knows what the fuck a mass grave is so you don't have an agreement on that um like um, what else would the retributive justice have been about? Oh, so when Lauren asked, like, okay, so should we just, like, blanket release, like, the names of all the, like, Catholic priests or whatever that worked at these schools? It seemed like Lance thought the answer to that was supposed to be yes. I'm not sure what his feeling on that was. That's not really retributive justice. Um, what else was there? Like, they couldn't agree or engage on, on any single point. Like, in terms of, like, the graves or whatever, like, a lot of chiefs have come out and said, like, yo, these were our cemeteries. Like, we just, you know, they're unmarked. We're going to try to get this shit back. But, like, they couldn't engage on any point. You, so don't want, you want to know a rule that I'm going to have going for? I've had this rule before, but, mm -hmm. again, I didn't. I didn't know a ton about like everybody, like the one person involved. Oh Every yeah, Lance asking Lauren, can you prove abuse didn't happen at this school? <laughs> How the fuck are you even supposed to engage well, with the not, question like that? I go ahead. Sorry, sorry. I, what I was, I was uh, going forward. I'm never gonna have somebody ever on my show again that doesn't have like a webcam. I'm just never gonna do it again. Yeah. Even if I'm offered something like I. The thing for me, there's a few reasons why, and the, and this is not even like something specifically directed at this person as like an individual. But yeah, just rabbit like fucker. Go ahead. Whole shows, right? Mm -hmm. um, number one, I don't like being so public personally, where everybody knows my name. It's literally my brand, and the person I'm talking to or the people on my show don't have to, and so the consequences for them fucking up or the consequences for like me screwing up is not the same. 
Oh, I think I literally time. just gave this take right as the debate started. I don't know if you were listening to me. I literally said that exactly. I was like, I don't know how I feel about no webcam debates because anything I say, I'm held accountable to for the rest of my life. I get docs, FBI hit, like all this shit or whatever. Mm -hmm. Like it feels a little shitty sometimes when I've got like an anon dude with yeah, no camera. Because like, that, right, definitely know. because like every every other show, like I'll have somebody be like, well, Dylan, you know, this isn't really good for your career. And just yeah. knowing that people like actually like do that or like the other day, people were like going through my LinkedIn profile being like, look at this fucking fed. He worked for this political pack. And I was like, oh, God yeah. damn. It. Oh, and like, and, just, and then looking back at them, and they're like, there's literally fucking nobody's. They're anons on the internet. That's fucking sucks. Mm -hmm. Like, I just don't, I just don't like that. Genre. And also, it's just not good. Like, for the people watching, like, you want to be able to see someone talk. And as mm -hmm. a moderator, you all you have to do, like, you you see all this like visual stimulation. You got to look at Lauren. You got to look at connor you got to look at the surfs and then you see like a profile picture you don't know when they're talking or not mm -hmm. and a lot of these people who don't have web webcams usually also haven't put a lot of effort into their mics and so it's really hard to hear when they're talking mm -hmm. and so then they get to talk like like in this instance like 10 minutes out of the whole show no but it's not only that from this instance. No, it's at, that talk. his mic quality was fine. That had nothing to do with that. He didn't say anything because he didn't have anything what? to say. Let's because be clear. his wait, wait, the space no, between his, his ears is emptier than Northern Alberta. Mic, he is no, a brainless fuck. Wait, so go ahead. his mic quality was also not great. I, it was very. It I had was to fine. turn him on. Oh, wait, no, no, no. I had to turn him almost to max. Maybe on the surface he had a different thing. It was different. But on mine, I had to like turn him like Discord like my volume to all the way like, sure you might have had to turn him up but he still had nothing to say he was a dumb fuck the mic yeah, quality I, I, here I was agree with well I, I agree with the fact that he didn't say much in fact i can send you the numbers on it once i, I already saw it on your twitter yeah yeah so he talked about 10 minutes out of the whole two-hour show yep did you um i'm curious did you have mul did you have 1v1 set up between lauren and the serfs and she canceled and asked for a 2v2 did that ever happen um, I never set that up no okay just curious uh, but to be clear this was given to me two days ago lance mm -hmm. told me that that he was trying to do that so maybe he did that with somebody else and then i was told that basically what happened is he wanted to have one mm -hmm. then she like changed demands or something for like a moderator and all this other stuff than 2v2s mm -hmm. so i can i have no clue i would just, this fell in my lap two days ago gotcha okay <sighs> the wolf pack's coming for you ctv yeah wolf pack's coming for you man did you did you see his recent arc yeah i saw him yeah about the confederacy <laughs> Oh, I didn't see that. I just saw him wearing a suit or whatever. <laughs> no, it's, it's the suit. But uh, recently, I I fucking tweeted out like something like Robert E. Lee was not that good of a general. Fuck off. Oh yeah. And he's now on a he's on a Robert E. Lee was one of the best generals ever. Like arc, and he's mm -hmm. like, and it's I don't know, man. I, I I'm just I gotta say, there's a lot of people you could face in the future. CTV is somebody could strip that belt from you, man. Yeah, maybe. You gotta look out for the wolf pack. They'll mull you. <clears throat> you should when you're when you see people having debate. This is just a personal rule of mine. Like when I'm arguing with people, unless I know the person and we're friendly, I will never use like a philosophy term. Like I'm never gonna say like fallacious appeal to authority, or I'm never gonna like I won't I won't because it's usually. Can I be bluntly honest? Yeah. Every single time I hear that shit, I'm like, I don't know what the fuck you're saying. These are just big words that confuse me. Sure, and I, and it's and usually it's just like unnecessary. Like just explain what they're doing wrong. You don't have to use like the debate term or whatever. Um, like we don't need to know that you've seen like the imager post of the fallacies and everything. Um, when they kept saying like when lance kept going over and over again uh it's just a semantic debate when the semantics of the words they were arguing about was literally material to the entire conversation like what is a mass grave like oh man this is honest to god like i i admit i fully admit maybe i, I could be biased because i have a huge hate boner for the surf's tv because i think he literally has the intelligence of uh, like a 10 year old um like my god like i'm trying hard to give him some kind of edge because like i know that i hate him and i know everybody knows that i hate him so i'm trying to find like points where i can give him a little bit but god damn you do you can you name a single part of this conversation that you thought that he, you felt like he prepared for that i thought that he prepared for uh -huh. i think his opening statement was prepared um, <laughs> give, me, give, give me a second here okay give me, his give closing me statement was, i feel like his closing statement give was the one he did the most research on so uh, I do think during, towards the end when he was listing out statistics of like this percentage of people today uh, were sexually abused, this percentage of this, he had links. He linked them all. I could send you all the links. Sure, percentages prepare. of abuse is right over. But like where is the yeah, thing that says had, it was? Actually, I can say that like he posted, I think, like six or seven links. And I think only one other person posted a link, I think, once. And that was Lauren. Mm -hmm. Yeah, but it seemed so like he had like a couple prepared. facts and figures like memorized, but he didn't really have like any good arguments to build off of them. Like he kept trying to set up the straw man that um, Connor and Lauren were saying like, oh, nothing bad happened. And that was like what the argument he was running with a lot. Like, oh, nothing bad happened. Oh, nothing bad happened. But like neither of them were making that argument. Um, 
Yeah, the th- the thing is though, Lauren would like say things during the debate that made it like was just fucking terrible optically. Like at one point, she said like this this was unfortunate, and I was and I was fucking sitting there like, why the fuck would you use that word? It was I don't know. Are you? I think you were watching my. <laughs> Wait, were you watching? I watched. My... I started. I started watching halfway through. Oh yeah, because I that was my first big criticism of her. when she said unfortunate. It was dumb. Later on though, in that same statement, she used the adjective horrific, but she almost fucked up really hard with that answer. Yeah. Um, yeah. What a horrible fucking conversation, though. Jesus Christ. Can I ask you a question? Yeah, what's up? Do you think there's any way this could have been improved through moderation? Like, there's anything I could have changed to do it better? Um, in terms of for moderation, no. I mean, like, if you got, if half the people aren't, like, even capable of engaging with the topic, then, I mean, what are you going to do? What are you supposed to do? Right? Well, When that oh, rabbit guy oh. opened up his opening statement, he sounded impressive. Like, he was going to have a lot of shit to say, huh? Yeah, he's done it good. Well. And do you think a lot of it, do you think any of it has to do with the fact that, I I mean, I don't know this person, but I doubt they're like a big streamer or like, I, I mean, they literally don't have a cam. So do you think it's, any of it had to do with stage fright, anything like that, possibly? No, I think they were genuinely just fucking dumber than a box of rocks. Lance has been doing his little like indigenous tour where he like basically rides all the dead indigenous kids to get more popular on all these little shows that he goes on and, and talks about. And then, um, why do you want to say things in the most inflammatory? Like, I mean, that's what he does because it's disgusting because it's actually disgusting. He's one of the most disgusting people that do it. Like, when I talk about issues, I care about the issues. If I talk about something, I'm not gonna, okay, I've got, do you, not think you, do you think he doesn't care about? No, I don't think he gives a fuck about any of these uh, people. I Absolutely. I will I bet my life on it. No. Shoot me, strike me no. dead, God, if he gives a no. single flying fuck about any of these. He absolutely doesn't. He, these kids are the way for him to propel himself to a little bit more Twitch and fucking YouTube fame. You, That's it. I mean, 100%. If he, if he cared about it at all, he would have known at least one thing about any of the things that he talked about. He didn't know what the ground penetrating radar scans are. He didn't know anything about the first fucking grave site, the big one that said okay, everything. Wait, wait, wait. Up. Okay, pause, pause. He did have sources. He did later on talk about not only the statistics of the residential schools and like the harm that that yeah, caused. Yeah, that's he great. Had, he got wait, stuff that he dug out of a Twitter had, thread. Not... He, he, that's all he had. He didn't have a. He didn't. Well, he wasn't able to seriously he went, grapple he didn't with send anything. Me any Twitter threads? I can get. I can give you the direct links. No, he, I, he got links probably Twitter. from Twitter threads. He, well, he probably, didn't. Do you have any? <laughs> you just saying shit. Because I, I can like infer like that a, due to the like fact that he wasn't able to seriously mess. engage in any of the corner. topics. For instance, how many times did he dance between that point? The indigenous school. Here's something that he doesn't know. I hate that I had to reveal this, but here's something they did. Is he doesn't know that Dr. Bryce report that he cited over and over again. It was fuck from fucking 1907. And it accounted for 1,500 kids. And Connor Points was talking around this because Connor is a decent human being and he hasn't been down to the fucking sludges, to the, to the disgusting well, dirt of hell that I've gone to in these debates. And he didn't realize how mind-numbingly fucking empty that, that, that the Surf's TV, that, that his brain is, right? He didn't realize how much empty space that if you were to poke any part of his head with a needle, it would literally collapse in on itself because I, of the vacuum that exists. Right? No, 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 no. He, because he kept saying over and over and over again, right? Oh my God, 50 to six, uh, 40 to 60% of kids died of tuberculosis. 40 to 60, there were 150,000 kids, my dude. That Dr. Bryce report that you're citing was from over 100 fucking years ago. Why do you keep saying it? And then trying to dance back to that, well, in 1996, the last school was closed. He didn't know anything about that school. He didn't know a single fact about it. And he's trying to make it sound like that fucking school, that kids were fucking failing math class and then being sent to the fucking, uh, the, the First Nations electric chair to be electrocuted for it. That was the narrative that he was running because he had no idea about any of the fucking conversation. Like, it's okay, astounding for- to me. Sorry, go ahead. Okay. So, genuine question. I actually don't see a problem with him sourcing something from 1907, considering he was talking about like graves that were most certainly not produced in the 1950s or 60s. I don't think anybody ever suggested this is like, like this was like I don't know, fucking disco music was going on and these graves were being filled, right? Well, but if you so, if you what say would be the something, with him sourcing something from 1907, because he said 40 to 60 percent of children. Okay, so let's just follow this. Okay, don't. Mm-hmm. This is a Jordan Peterson tactic, okay? Well, no, even Jordan, actually, let me qualify that. Even Jordan Peterson wouldn't be this dishonest with this inferencing, okay? What he did was, he said, 40 to 60% of children died in indigenous schools. We know that because of a report by Dr. Bryce, which was suppressed by the Canadian government, and those schools weren't closed until 1996. What does that lead you to believe? That leads you to believe that 40 to 60% of kids are dying in these schools up until 1996, obviously. That's like the A-B connection that you're going to make in your head. Can I ask you a question? What would have been a, if you, I, I don't know, I'm not really sold on that, but what would have been a better way to say it then? What do you think would have been a better way to bring up? Because that is pertinent information. What would have been a better way to bring it up? 
the the problem is, is that any other way to talk about that, Connor and Lauren already agreed with, that the conditions in these schools were horrible. A lot of kids died in those schools, and it was just a tragedy that 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 Canada was doing what, in my opinion, and I'm, I think Connor wait, and Lauren would agree with this, what, what amounted to a one, cultural wait, genocide. Wait, wait. Yeah. Didn't at one point, like, Connor be like, I remember at one point, like, if these things go on, right? Mm -hmm. And I remember you specifically said, because I did start, like, watching, like, halfway through, you specifically said, this is where Lance should, like, hit him. Like, no, this has happened, then lists off all the things, right? So like um, it felt like a lot of it was not not like well no I was giving a accept, accept, accept. it was like if this happens or if that was going on a lot of ifs ands maybes yeah and potentially I was just like, I was trying to give a sample argument for what Lance could buy back on because he literally couldn't engage with anything he was like a barking chihuahua like trapped in the middle of the wilderness with a bunch of like lions circling in like that's how so I was just giving like a sample like if he, because I'm trying to find what point can Lance push back on because like either Connor or Lauren could have handled this on their own because he just had nothing to say about anything. But, Somebody in chat just said up until 1907 there was that that wouldn't have worked because the study was done in 1907 so it doesn't necessarily mean that that stopped at 1907 you would have to find something to like well no because we googled this on. and read it on screen it was like a five page pdf or whatever about like what dr bryce had written on this and there was an yeah, article it was at 1907 that's when it was done though in 1907 it was collected. looking at some schools it, it amounted to 1500 kids i think or like 1497 kids or whatever and like 40 to 60 percent of them had died due to tuberculosis but when there were 150,000 children that ran through that system he's making it sound like fucking what that 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 60 to 90,000 kids were, were killed from tuberculosis. That's a huge fucking number, right? Like Connor literally said that cultural genocide happened. I'm guessing Lauren would probably agree with the same. I don't know if she would or wouldn't. I don't know if she even believes in the concept of cultural genocide. I mean, I'm guessing she would probably agree to some parts of that. So there's so anything that that um, the Serbs would try to wiggle out of there would end up just being agreeing with the other side completely. There's another thing that I felt like th that was weird and I felt like could have got more heat. Like when he was talking about these, these, these technologies, um, it felt like... I don't know how to put it exactly, but it felt like, like from what I was looking at, she was like, well, we don't even know that these things could be finding bodies. Right. But then like, I was like, while I was moderating, I was like, that feels fucking weird. And then I looked it up and I was looking at this and it's very fucking obvious. These things have been used to find bodies all the time. And that most likely from every source being looked at, even the one she was like talking about suggested mm -hmm. that this is almost like 90%, 95% like so, bodies. Yeah. So we just haven't done the exhumation process. So I feel like at some point Lance could have just been like, okay, Lauren. So if any of these are exhumed, any of these can exhumed in the future, mm -hmm. Like, are you going to change your position when we when we find these spots? Because it's just, I feel like it's almost like inevitable. Yeah, one of these things. Are and that's that, and uh, Lauren was at fault for this because she didn't define that what mass grave meant well enough. I think she needed to do a better job at that. If I'm Absolutely. guessing, what if I'm getting brought up also? Why did Connor fucking be like, okay, we'll just call it mass grave? That, that doesn't make. I, sense. He shouldn't have, but it's because he's probably trying to be a little bit more generous in the conversation and find common ground. But he like the issue isn't Kessler. the issue isn't that the ground penetration scanner like um, like, and again, I I'm, I can't insert too much into what Lauren said, but I'm guessing they would have to acknowledge that obviously some of these are bodies but the issue is that are we finding like mass graves that were previously unknown or are first nations people taking people to where they previously thought maybe cemeteries were and then having them do the ground penetration scans to see if children are there that's what they're looking for it's not mass graves where it's like they took all these kids out infected them with tuberculosis shot them and buried them in the ground it's like there was a cemetery here like we're running the scans there's probably bodies here you don't know because the gprs or the gps or whatever um they, they don't actually 100 they don't tell you what's there you just see basically little bumps on a screen and they're probably bodies but you don't know and they haven't exhumed my understanding is they haven't exhumed any of these bodies yet so we technically we don't know yet like i don't think anybody that runs these machines would say like oh yeah i bet my whole reputation on this right probably grave sites but again not like the mass graves of genocided children that these schools are trying to hide from the government Right? That's an emotionally charged word that's supposed to draw a certain type of reaction, like the reaction that might make you go and set a fucking church on fire, for instance. Yeah. So what, what do you think would have been a better way to present it if mass graves? Because the thing is, mass graves, of course, is a word that's used because you don't want to underplay the severity of how bad these abuses no, were. No, mass so graves is a word you use when you want to get clicks on your YouTube video because you want to ride off the backs of dead children in order to make ad revenue and clout. The person, that, is the that is the intent. That is the intent. 100 percent i don't there's I don't no other reasonable explanation like, for how how could you care about something that much and know so little about it i know more about well, my car really, because i like I cars and I he knows about this whole fucking like okay it's, can i be can, yeah go let me, go, let sorry, me be go. honest right mm -hmm. i've even at one point like called it a mass grave and in, in the intro i even said that in sure but are you making bit, rounds on all why yeah go ahead in the in the reason why is it just like if I, I wanted to, number one, of course, like talk about the severity of the situation. And I mean, I also hadn't sat down and like thought about the like the definition of that specific word for that long, because like, hey, large amount of dead kids found in a fucking like grave under a schoolyard mm -hmm. sounds like what a mass grave would be to me. I agree I'm, I'm with you. That's down. what I thought. And so, yeah, I don't think that necessarily just because somebody says 
these fucking mass graves that that means oh they don't care about the issue i feel like that's that's no reading way too much into people's intent i agree with you i thought the same thing so what we are is we are victims of misinformation by aggressors like the surfs tv lance is the one who's planting that idea of mass graves in your head because he's the one that's supposed to be researching this he's been making the rounds on all these talk shows bringing on people to chat about this shit he's the one that's using that term mass graves when i heard it yeah that's kind of what it sounds 250 bodies found under some fucking school why the fuck are they burying people at school i'm an american that doesn't make any sense to me whatsoever but you must understand that somebody saying there was a mass grave of 700 people found outside of a school that that is a far cry from there was a cemetery outside of a religious school that buried children that died of tuberculosis um, and like we're going back now and finding places where there are no longer headstones or whatever and you know we're, we're finding these bodies or whatever but it's not like they were unaccounted for or they were like shot and buried in some I huge think, fucking the hole thing is, the thing that should have been leaned into a lot more is the fact of and this is something Lance Stark brought, brought up briefly and I do think he, should, he could have brought this up more it was actually really effective when he brought it up because nobody could respond to it was the fact that it was these kids had we've been told their parents that they ran away that these were children that were like ran away but they were actually just put them in a grave and now they're there's fucking years later we're just finding about yeah. oh i guess they didn't actually run away that is something that is like very clearly like terrible like malcontent and like mm -hmm. something they could talk about like like uh, that would be like the hidden bodies of children or something like that like, that would be an accurate way to describe that like you're hiding ch dead children that's what you're doing yeah. you're hiding that would dead be bad if that happened make up yes. for your mistakes like, absolutely that, well, i mean that did happen then why didn't he talk more about that he did bring it up I don't, I'm going to be honest with up, you. He didn't bring it up. I listened to the whole thing and I don't even remember bringing that up. So if he did bring it up, it was literally one time when he was doing his whole I, circus, well, I was, like, okay, fairy wheel of, like, the I, 50 million was, talking points. Yeah. I was there and then I watched, like, half of yours and I saw him, I remember him bringing it up when I was there and I watched it happen while you were watching it. Okay. Yeah, he might have said that one time, but, like, he literally brought it up one time. It was probably part of his, like, merry-go-round of, like, 15 talking points well, anytime yeah, he, he got caught on he, something. He was shooting out, like, statistics. It was mm -hmm. part of the thing he was saying in, in, in like, response, I think, at one point. Sure. But then you should focus on that. Like when you start with a lie, everything else you say afterwards is so, sounds so yeah. weak. I said he should have focused on that more. I think it would have been more effective. But, you know. Zerka, have me on the Royale. You're probably oh, yeah. joining. Do you want to come on the next one? Don't be emotional. Yeah, sure. Why not? Be fun. Apparently, Lauren canceling now, unless Lauren is lying in her emails. Apparently, the Lauren canceling until she gets a two v two debate or whatever is not necessarily true the either. Me and no hype. I think she said from the very beginning. I'll do Lance's show on two conditions. One, that there is a moderator, either modern day debates with Dylan Burns, and two, that I may bring a second on to debate slash chat with me. So the idea that she, like, canceled, I guess, and asked for a 2v2 doesn't really seem... Unless he's got other evidence, yeah. but... How do you think Lance's fans are going to see his performance? Oh, I don't know. I'll probably read through I some of these like comments tonight, but... Intellectual. Am I right in thinking that above all, you're going to say that any genocide is ongoing? Rio Flamel, yeah, basically. I don't dollars. think there's an ongoing genocide. Good job tonight, buddy YouTube chat rise up, love you. I think it Kill seems... Chaos. It seems pretty obvious you could argue that there was, like, genocidal... Probably even intent How of the government at one point in time. How penetrating radar works? Ye. Like, for sure. I think you could have, um... I think you could make that argument. Um, or that seems to be the case. <laughs> I'm gonna be real, Tail was not really helpful and didn't contribute anything to this conversation. Damn. Oh, nor did Lance, to be fair. It was an embarrassment overall. Oh, no. After this debacle with Lance and JF, this is no surprise. The fact that standards of these debates is still so poor in 2021 is unfathomable. If anything, the standard might be going down. Oof. I expected more out of you, Lance. Your closing job at Lawrence salvaged this debate. <laughs> oh, no. Lord Lance, I love you, but this was a dumpster fire. How does Tails not understand that a mass grave has multiple bodies in it? Lance, can you please do more research before these debates? The other side clearly was more well prepared. Oh no. Tail guy was useless. To debate. Okay, so even Lance's own fan base sees that, like, the tail dude, the rabbit fucker, was absolutely pointless. Holy shit. This guy's trying to say right wing actors are false flag burning down churches. Remember to hit that like and subscribe and don't forget the notification bell so that my videos show up right in your feed. Can anybody name like one song from recovery besides I'm not afraid? 